Say after me, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. Say, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day, nor the noisome pestilence. He didn't tell you there are no arrows flying around. He said, you shall not be afraid. In other words, it does not concern me. You must believe it. Hallelujah. Don't leave your house thinking and wondering and seeing every bike man moving. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Nothing just happens. Hallelujah. I speak a very big parable to you. Nothing just happens. This is why we are praying. You must learn to interpret things from the lens of the spirit. And you will see that beyond the activities that happen, nothing just happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? Vehicles don't just crisscross themselves like that. Spiritual wickedness that move around to make sure they jeopardize the destinies of men. But you know what to do. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise. We bless you because you are faithful. Thank you for tonight. Pray in one minute and say, Father, I have come again. Change me. I've come to hear. I've come to contact understanding. Hallelujah. Give us understanding, O oh Lord. We incline our hearts to your word. It will make us wise. Your word is giving us wisdom. Teaching us how to walk like gods upon the earth. And tonight, Lord, we expose our spirits to the light of your word. Let there be transformations. Let there be paradigm shifts, O God. Help us, empower us, challenge us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Walk around to ten people, hug them, tell them happy Valentine. happy valentine whether you know them or not happy valentine hallelujah god bless you please sit down once again we welcome everybody inside and outside there's a lot to do tonight we're still on our series on financial dominion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever more. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Strings, strings, strings. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Pray from your heart. It's a simple prayer. I love you forever. I love you forever. More than money. I love you More than power. Forever. More than Lord. faith. Declare your love for him on this day. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. One more time. Sing I love you, Lord. our love for you thank you for the privilege of access to light light that transforms light that builds light that changes lord in the name of jesus tonight we pray that you will help us we cry for the help of the spirit 
Open our eyes to the secrets of kingdom wealth. Grant us access to light that will change us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 35, 27. Mm. Last week, we started by talking a lot about was just an introduction we ran through the course curriculum ah, what is all this on the screen i thought we finished this whole valentine thing please let's get to work no more distraction it's time to concentrate psalm 35 verse 27 Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. Last week I began sharing with us and I told us that it's very wasteful to give people information that they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. They will not recognize it they will not value it and it will not be profitable unto them and i did tell us last week that um, there are certain steps we need to take if we desire change and transformation in any area of our life especially our finance number one that we must recognize the need to be financially blessed hallelujah you must see the need you must see the evil of poverty you must see the limitation that poverty and lack brings upon the body of christ and even to the agenda of god i told you that recognition creates a sense of responsibility in fact there is a whole book about recognition by mike Murdoch. it's called the law of recognition recognizing the need breaks limitations so that you don't have limitations stopping you and then it creates dissatisfaction hallelujah and then the second point is that you go for knowledge haven't recognized that there is a need to be blessed you go for knowledge hallelujah and then number three you take action consistent application of the things that you've heard how many of us still remember all these things praise god i'm just reviewing it quickly for the sake of those who were not here last week if you were not here the messages are available please get it and listen listen and listen again i don't know how many times i've listened to last week's message and um we discussed the concept of prosperity and i i said to us last week that prosperity comes from the word prosper remember and it means what to do well praise the lord to prosper means to possess a means an ability or power please in this series i want to be very very slow very straightforward i don't want to bring any ambiguity i just want us to get this as principle so that everyone will understand hallelujah we don't just want a few people to understand we want everybody to understand It means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs may be and remember we discussed five areas of prosperity can you remember number one spiritual prosperity number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity that's the prosperity of your health number four financial prosperity number five so I told us that for many people, listen, every time they talk about prosperity, they think money. Hallelujah. Now you can see that financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of kingdom prosperity. Now in the world system, they just say happiness, joy, and so on and so forth. You see a lot of that in business books, but everything we are discussing here is with a kingdom paradigm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I told us that to be prosperous spiritually means to be born again 
filled with the Holy Spirit and that you understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. So your degree of prosperity spiritually is not just measured by being born again alone or being filled with the Holy Spirit alone. The degree to which you are understanding the ways and the principles of the kingdom is one of the indices that we use to measure spiritual prosperity. And then finally, the degree to which you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. So when you say man is spiritually prosperous, you are not just saying that man is a church goer. No. That he understands the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, mental prosperity. We said how that it culminates in the soundness of your mind. How much your mind is well developed and deployed. Remember I stressed last week and I'll stress it again. That Christianity does not make people fools. Are you getting my point? Christianity does not make people just relevant as far as heaven and kingdom things are concerned. Christianity helps people to add value to mankind here and now. It says you are the light of this system. You give illumination and it says you are the salt of the earth. You preserve and you add taste. You add value. So the church is relevant even in society. We are not just relevant as far as speaking in tongues and falling down and getting up. And this is one of the reasons why in many regions of this nation, the church is not respected. They are not seeing our socioeconomic impact. They are not seeing us affect various strata of society. Hallelujah. I think I did a teaching there, Conquering Cosmos. Also, you can get the teaching where I told us that the gospel is not just a message. It's not just tract. It's an ideology. Taking the value system of the kingdom to the various mountains of human existence. Education, politics and governance, finance, um, religion and media, arts and so on and so forth. You can get the teaching. Hallelujah. So your ability to train your mind to build yourself and the ability to be free from worry and fear how many of you know that there are so many people they are blessed but they are afraid of their wealth because they are wondering what if i die all this kind of mental torture is not mental prosperity you can be rich financially and be poor mentally praise the lord bible says the lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number three bodily prosperity we are not completely prosperous if we remain in sickness and weakness and so on and so forth. To be prosperous health-wise, it means to be free from sickness, to be free from diseases, to be free from infirmity. And then it also means to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness. All of these yokes, curses, all kinds of things that people inherit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be free from it. And when you are free from that, you are prosperous bodily. The fourth one, and that's going to be the subject of our discussion, is financial prosperity. Say financial prosperity. It means freedom from poverty, freedom from lack. There is a difference between poverty and lack, and today we are going to see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Poverty is a state of um, lack of productivity. There is nothing you are doing completely. And as a result of that, you do not have the ability to add value, whether by ignorance or demonic oppression or whatever it is. And then there is nothing that you can exchange for any kind of material um, blessing. But lack is a perpetual state of insufficiency, right? So someone who suffers lack, you have, but it's always not enough. Always. It's not like there is nothing. It's just always not enough. Hallelujah. So financial prosperity is freedom from poverty, freedom from lack, 
and take note you must write this and the effects that come with them there is an effect that poverty does to the life listen if poverty was neutral there will be no need to attack the issue of poverty are you getting what i'm saying that means if poverty did not cause anything to anybody it did nothing just neutral like the air we would not pay any attention to the issue of poverty but we are we are taking the issue of poverty personal because of what it causes to our lives our families the society and the advancement of the kingdom at large hallelujah praise god it also means having abundant financial supplies i'm giving you the definition of financial prosperity having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it if you do not have a means to replenish and sustain you are not rich it doesn't matter what you have hallelujah praise the lord so it's not enough to have abundant financial supply anybody can dash you money are you getting me now any well-wisher can love you and dash you money you can inherit wealth for instance but the ability to replenish it and sustain that flow is what makes you financially prosperous everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it's our time we arise it's our season everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it says arise and shine for your light is come tonight your light is coming in the name of jesus number five relational prosperity that's the last index for or dimension of prosperity in the kingdom having quality relationships that give you opportunities to express love to express care to improve yourself to share and to impact lives you must have an opportunity to bless people you must have an opportunity to interact to be a blessing to people there are many people who are financially prosperous but relationally they are very poor they walk alone they have no friend nobody to bless nobody can say it's because of this person i was blessed today hallelujah so that kind of money that kind of blessing that at the end of the journey of your life please bring some more people if there are more people they can just come and sit at least they can leave the front rows they can just share maybe a few of them or a few of you some of the leaders your leaders you can just go there so that some people can come to the front hallelujah few people who have the opportunity please come and sit down praise god how many of you lift please look at me how many of you have seen people who you know maybe in their lifetime maybe now they're in their old age they were blessed but they didn't lift anybody have you seen people like that they didn't bless anybody nobody went to school because of them they didn't feed anybody they didn't help the poor there are people like that and so maybe while they were working nobody got a job because of them they didn't bless anybody some of them were politicians their environments were not developed and these people come down and in their old age they are left alone because they did not invest in the life of anyone relational prosperity is so important because by and large in your life that's one of the things that will matter are you getting me 
there are some people who will never be poor in this life because of the, those who have been raised and lifted because of them. Hallelujah. For instance, my children will never suffer in this life again. You see that? Whatever price I've paid for them, even if you hate me, you will love them. One day you will just look at them. I'm sure maybe my daughter will be made head girl. You know all this kind of solidarity, whether she's qualified or not. See, there are, you can create a, a platform for generational blessings. Look at what we inherited from our parents. Praise God. They didn't do anything. They just produced enemies. And you just got up and your uncle said, you are the son of who? You say, I'm the son of this person. You say, that's right. Because of something that happened when you were not there. That means relationships matter. Are you getting my message now? Your, your quality of relationship with... There are some things that you will get for free on account of relationship. Hallelujah. Some of us, because of the relationships that we are making with certain people here now, you may never need to pay for certain things in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One day, someone will come to a showroom to buy the car. And maybe it's Ken that is the owner of the showroom. Ah! Sam, I remember you. He said, come in. The inner one, not that one outside. There is the inner one, the holy one. The holy of holies and he says please pick anyone he says see it's been a while and sam is so blessed that when he takes it he will go back and deposit money in his account and say it's a seed so it's not a product of insufficiency there is a realm like that poor people never know there is a realm like that but there is hallelujah so as you're sitting down right now, I want you to imagine your two, three, four, five children standing and saying, Daddy, you better hear what they are saying. We are coming. <laughs> Today is Valentine. Love. Love means responsibility. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't ever let your children look at you one day and say, what happened? Is it that you didn't hear what others were? What happened? And you know, we are preserving all these messages in the future. They will play it and you will see yourself when you were small. Your child will see you and say, I thought you said you, you were not born again then. That's you there. Why are we still broke? You know, then our parents lied to us. Some of them said they took first all through. Some of them said all kinds of things. Eventually we said, this, your story is not connecting. You know? Why are we still suffering like this? <laughs> parents, we're sorry. relational prosperity now look at me for those of you who can choose to neglect quality relationships i'm just this is not a discussion but i just feel it's important i point it because there are certain people that have this disdain and disregard for people you're not as fine as me you don't speak english as me you are not doing this. I'm wearing a designer's. You are wearing something else. Praise the Lord. And we create all of this stratification. Tonight, God is speaking to you. This is your first message tonight. Repent quickly. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. That sister you see sitting down, she may have only one dress, but there is something happening inside her. The Bible says the vision in the end, it said, though it tarries, it will not speak at the beginning, but in the end, it will speak. This is why we, I respect and I honor people so much, including these children. Some of you just look at them and nod. No. Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his shell. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, God is just to turn the table 
and one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem and you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and say, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Relationships. And they brought a crippled man who dashed monkey banana who would take that crippled man to the, to the palace. Relationships. Everybody say relationships. Relationships can give you what money may not give you. There are people on account of relationships they got jobs without interview. You've been seeing your roommate because they are humble. You don't know who their father is. You're just speaking against everybody and feeling your this and that. And one day you may go to their house and find somebody there that your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. When I see old women and very old men the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him that he's coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand? I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look and say all kinds of things. No, value people now. Especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too. Look, let me tell you. The word can give you an inheritance. Never conclude on any man who is getting revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many wealthy people today. There are people in the presidency. There are multi Bill Gates had classmates, true or false. All of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in the lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have. Love people. When you see us say, turn around, hug one another and all of this, we are doing it for a reason. We are doing it for a reason. Everybody say opportunity. Remember my message on activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships i'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship no the bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness unfruitful that means it doesn't bear fruit there are some relationships that bear fruit hallelujah it doesn't mean the people have to be perfect i'm not talking of love relationship now i'm just talking of general relationship the people may have their differences just like you have your own too correct people are not working with us because we are perfect there are some of you who hate me it's just that you like what i represent to the body and you are receiving it in peace praise the lord value relationships write it write it so that even after 10 years if you are looking at your note you will see it. 
value relationships when you see people greet them greet them don't say i'm a pastor of so so so, so ministry so what huh greet people you get up in the morning you pass people good morning huh don't look and say you know when i was in 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 ss3 that's when you were writing common entrance so what let me tell you if age used to give food some of our parents will be resting by now relationships hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and let's see some of the effects that they bring fear 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 number two insecurity many poor people are insecure the bible says money is a defense it says a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended but a poor man uses entreaties always begging a life of begging greed many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion greed what if i give where would the money come from again so someone can be dying and you can join people to say ah you are dying what happened whereas you can rush the person to the hospital but you are saying me too what i have is not much greed self-centeredness some of the effects that financial hardship brings self-centeredness many people are self-centered and part of the reason not all of the reason but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency self-centered they don't think about anybody just me myself what i have is not much you know if it was much we would have shared but now that is more please don't disturb me i can pray for you self-centeredness unrighteousness unrighteousness many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money they've entered wrong relationships wrong marriages they have compromised given themselves freely and cheaply they've been involved in diabolic things all kinds of things because of poverty when you pay a man and say go and kill another person and i will give you hundred thousand or two hundred thousand that's terrible unrighteousness say in the name of jesus i will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things yeah. there are many people who live perpetually under fear will the landlord come and kick me out and we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like abuja and now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it hallelujah tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of god's economic system mm. grant us light oh god the anatomy of god's economic system the internal workings how does this thing work financial prosperity is not a mystery it's not magic there is a way this thing works and tonight i pray that god will open our eyes to understand hallelujah the anatomy of god's economic system blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah 
Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, every time we examine anything, any subject in the Christian faith, you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions. There are two perspectives. Are you listening to me now? There is the world's economic system. Everybody say the world's economic system. That means the way that people in the world run their economy. This world, this system, cosmos, it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich, they have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay, lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm, but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. And he tells us the limitations of this world system. He said thieves can come. All kinds of things can go wrong. But there is a system that has another mode of operation. And so tonight we want to examine this system. Everybody say heaven's economy. Say it again, heaven's economy. Many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church. Either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity it is carnality but by now i know that every one of us here hates poverty is that true and we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is is carnality no no it's not at all at all there is a lot that the kingdom of god cannot the, the advancement of the kingdom of god can be crippled when there is no finance hallelujah so there are two economic systems what's the first one what's the first one the world's economic system and there is the second one what is it hallelujah now the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth are you getting my point because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth realm. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned? Why does God bless us? When a herbalist, when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says, Baba, I want charm. Say for what? say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him there is a system so why does god bless us because if you do not know why god prospers people you will misuse prosperity when it comes are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity? They don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom. So they get money and do lots of crazy things. You know, I, I, I told you, I think it was last week. I don't know if I said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat, any one of them. Hallelujah. I watched a documentary how that the son of the sultan of brunel or so i think one of these very wealthy billionaires hallelujah 
his child, I think if I, if I remember rightly, about 22 years old. When he was celebrating his 22-year-old birthday, the father gave him $250 million as a birthday gift. The wealthiest man of God in Africa is worth about 190 million US dollars after years of operating this world. But now one son who clocked 22 years. Listen to me. I want to challenge you tonight. The father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family. Will he buy food in a restaurant? A man whose empire is built with gold. And the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht. And he brought in half of Hollywood stars. Half. Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy. Drink beer. Waste away. Become soul hunters. And he wanted to become friends with a popular. One of these secular musicians. And he knew that. Going to go and meet him the way a poor man a poor man uses entreaties. And he knew that that way would not work. So they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds. And presented it as an offer to become his friend. Do you think it will work? At once. At once. It worked at once. Now listen. That's a lot of money spent on vanity and the truth is compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had that's a chicken change that's pocket money are you getting what i'm saying don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system there are, of course any man that does not give his life to christ no matter what you have in this world you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom you must be advancing another cause Everybody's advancing something. Whether you know it or not. Are you getting my point? So why does God bless us? Never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion. The day you forget it, God is not entitled to bless you. Please follow me. Because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict. Your violation of them will cost you so much. Number one. The role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why God blesses us. Number one. To live a comfortable life. I shared this during the Kingdom Wealth Summit in 2010. Number one. To live a comfortable life. That's one of the reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom. Let me say it again. God is not glorified in our poverty. Say it after me. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Say one more time. God is not glorified when I am poor. Now say God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks i don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standard hallelujah there's nothing wrong living a very comfortable life you sleep in peace. You wake up in peace. God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. 
I want you to believe it no matter how you have suffered. Say it. God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much as you are saying it, you are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable, let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose. And in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God. One of the major reasons as a matter of fact. Why God blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation. But when you are a kingdom citizen. If you want to be open to the prosperity of God. And to command financial dominion. Then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom. Finance soul winning. Bless the lives of of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people. To better the lives of people. Hallelujah. Very important. Now I wrote something here and I want you to write it. It's God's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. I'll say it again. It is God's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities this is so important i know that there are kingdom financiers those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities but can i tell you part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom say amen if you believe that so financial dominion is not a wish i told you it's a it's a principle it's a path it has a formula if you can work with it then god will honor you otherwise you are not entitled as simple as that you may not go to hell but you are certainly not going to be eligible it is god's plan for every believer is god's desire for everyone seated and hearing me and even for the online community is god's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom listen we are still going to discuss other sections but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource god gives you there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom it's not just a special um a un, until you are prompted and all of that that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom it is very very important hallelujah that's the second reason the third reason why god blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical way to reveal the love of God and God so loved the world that he that you must give your love expression in this dying world to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a very practical way to help the poor to help the hungry to be committed in charity to be committed in community projects and nation building all of these things are part of the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom. That means God's blessings 
is not just limited to the house of God. First the house of God, but also to give the world an opportunity to see that God is love. I wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion, beyond culture, beyond gender, and beyond social status. When you come and build a school for a community, for instance, and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years, teach these children, whether you know them or not, that's revealing the love of God. When there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people, you help the needy, you provide for the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. How do you borrow a rich man money? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very, very rich? And maybe at a point he needs 1,000 now. And he said, please give me 1,000. Will you give him? Very quick, sir. Who knows? Maybe as he's giving you back, he won't give you that same 1,000. So when a rich man says, please borrow me, very quickly, he says, I, I have. He said, no, no, let me just say, mm, it's my own, I have. Because you know that when he's giving you back, he'll say, ah, ah you out of this abundance. So let's just take this one. And you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously. So the Bible says when you give to the poor it's the same thing as God saying borrow me money I will return it to you. Ah, I will do. Goodness. God, every rich man blesses according to his ability. That means he first looks at his ability and from that revelation he will bless you. So the Bible says my God, this is Paul speaking, shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance, advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. It says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know? Listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that it can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now. So financial resources were given. But because they did not know why God blessed them, later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource. Because they did not know, they used the money to build an idol the gold and everything eventually they built an idol that's what a lot of people are doing every time you do not know why god blesses you will build an idol with it are you following me please this is a very important teaching i want you to pay rapt attention so god blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's not an accomplishment. You satisfy these rules and God trusts you with it. Please understand. That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? 
he gave them he gave them he gave them according to their several abilities right after a while he came back and demanded accountability write this word down stewardship please sit down write this word down stewardship this is this is this is a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom there are no owners of prosperity as it were financial prosperity no no there are stewards that god commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing the day you stop being a steward you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom everybody say i am a steward what does it mean to be a steward a caretaker a caretaker that means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy worthy enough that god can recommend you and can trust you there are some people who will never be rich no matter how much they pray and fast even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out you know why they are not trustworthy in this day and age let me tell you in this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer god is looking for distribution channels god is looking for houses men he can trust that you say lord you know i i told god something i said lord i know that many people have given in the kingdom but i want you to trust me and see what i will do for your kingdom and i mean it I'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity because there are many of us that until now all we are thinking about is just ourselves. Let me make quick money, hammer sharp sharp, marry one lady quickly, have children, build a house, enjoy my life, and go back to the village by December and say, All you suffering ones, how far God has been faithful. If that is your mindset, forget about kingdom wealth. Forget about kingdom wealth that you know that lord i'm a distribution center trust me trust me with insight trust me with resources trust me with capacity he gave out of trust he gave one five talent that means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well then the one with two and the one with one and after a while his point was proven to be correct because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it the one with ten multiplied it and it collected you see i said something years ago and i was accused of it i said in this wealth transfer there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of god in this country there are believers with houses estates and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom they are not doing anything for the kingdom only to get angry and talk fly around a church is saying we have a convention and maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million and that man is paying business class 2.5 right first class 2.5 and in one week he would travel four or five countries spend more than 10 or 15 million and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching when you do not take up kingdom responsibility you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom are you are you getting something right now greed self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion are you getting blessed many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping God from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed we are self-centered there is nothing the kingdom I can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom there are many of us here where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom. I'm not talking about offering. 
offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something. Do you have the kingdom at heart? David sat down and thought to himself. He said, how can I be in a royal palace made of gold? There is nothing I want and my God does not have a place. He said, although you, you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You do not need a house but me. I must build you a house. The tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside. There are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church, the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed. Don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A man will buy a car of 40 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent. How much is the rent? 500,000. What is it to just come and slip it in and say, Pastor, I am a kingdom citizen. I may not be a member of this church, but I know why God blesses me. Quietly, without chorusing around, create a special chair for me close to the pastor. Are you an elder? No. Are you a pastor? No. Who are you? I gave 500,000. Let me show you why many people, so that when you see a man that God is blessing, don't be angry. There is a price they have paid. And it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is a reorientation. When the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom. Notice I've not mentioned anything business. I've not mentioned anything money self. I've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people, this is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just by cut every of these things and they tell people open a shop, look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh -uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money, let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you is your season. In the name of Jesus what kept your family members will not keep you there are some of us this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say lord will a savior not arise will a savior not arise is this how we will die will a savior not arise many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families the lord brings salvation for us in the name of jesus christ while they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw the, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9. Want to read for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. 
Is that in your Bible? That means, Lord, I'm not just seeking all these millions and billions. How many cars can you enter at once? Even if you have 50 cars, you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars. You can only enter one. Is that true? So if it's just for yourself, you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you, no matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a TV program for 10 years quietly and say, man of God, stop thinking about money. You concentrate on praying. Look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from God. But there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity. Because of your house, I will seek your prosperity. What do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off 5% of his wealth and he's still a billionaire. He's giving 95% of the wealth to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet with the 5 billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God sat around the body of Christ and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrus until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one the closest is kenneth kenneth copeland the only person that i can say has gotten there he's not exactly a man of god is peter j daniels the man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer. And there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth? that can give a prostitute 10 million for one night dollars i'm not talking of naira and it does not shake them all these rich men go for extravagant outings and buy one wine one one wine about maybe 10 or 20 or fifty thousand dollars one wine and they will order cartons of it and believers are here begging please begging psalm 22 verse 5 give 22 dollars five cents all these kinds of suffering something is wrong it's not listen we are not mocking them but i believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen you better believe it i believe strongly that this generation will do something we are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill and they will see how we are so separated from the blessing are you getting blessed Forbes 100 billionaires, the top 100 people in the whole world. There are just about maybe five or six people who are professing believers. And that's the Walton family, Sam Walton and all the other people. Most of the other people are atheists, heterogeneous religions coming from wherever. Where is the church in this? Members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that. There is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, 
perpetual misuse of his blessings. Hosea chapter 4, verse 7. Is someone getting blessed tonight? You will thank God for these truths that you are hearing. Blessed are the ears that are hearing this. Don't trivialize it at all. Hallelujah. Everybody read. One to read. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably... Listen. There are some things that are not caused by demons. Is how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything. That in such, that insatiable lust for just everything. Money is a wild animal. It can tear you into pieces. If you don't control it that's why the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them hallelujah people make all kinds of nasty statements people say all kinds of things because they believe they have money they can hire police they can do all kinds of things praise the lord i want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you understand this, you are already in, in a very great, you are a, a landslide uh, uh, progression towards financial prosperity. spiritual laws of wealth and abundance now please pay attention we'll start talking about the laws now we've seen why god blesses us we want to see how he blesses us spiritual laws remember in our course curriculum when i read it for you last week sorry for those who didn't come last week we we read out a course curriculum just just follow we're really sorry i forgot to read it spiritual laws of wealth and abundance even so come Yeshua come and even so come take your bride away take us into new realms oh God how my soul longs to see your face my lord even so even so come yeshua come what are the laws there are spiritual laws brothers and sisters that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom every herbalist look at me if you see this brother today, come my brother. If by next week, Koinonia, this guy just comes with a what? Range Rover Sports, maybe. Or whatever it is, just, just keep that one. Let's, let's hurry up. Praise God. And he brings a car and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything. You can just look at him and say, my brother, in one week, where did you go to? You won't ask him what he did. You say, where did you go to? Somehow, we associate wealth with the spirit realm. Once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth, they say, no way. Leave this guy's money. This guy went somewhere. Not he did something. He went somewhere. So we, and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine. Is that true? So if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich, it tells you that there are spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Bless you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Please. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. This was a condition for prosperity. And it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? Observe and do. 
there is something to do there are laws to live by it's not automatic it's not the issue of receive prosperity there is a dimension where prayer comes in but i want you to know that there are laws everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom say one more time there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom let me tell you if you do not know these laws i don't care whether you have you have phd in finance and economics you will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity there are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school go and get a job do this and that wonderful we'll still talk about that but let me tell you prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws just thank you hallelujah praise the lord say spiritual laws oh there are laws there are laws just like there is the law of gravity whether you believe it or not is there if per adventure you climb a building and try to fall that's when you will know that there is a law hallelujah there are spiritual laws the first spiritual law is the law of tithing the law of tithing leviticus 27 verse 30 Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One to read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. It says, all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth it is a tenth ten percent of your income please write ten percent of whatever blessing god br brings to your life now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance money currency because of currency now we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say this is my tithe and all of that hallelujah the jews were an agrarian people and because of that that was why all of these things were written but for us now it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it 10 percent hallelujah now listen I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not, the Bible says obedience is better than, there are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, um, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We are going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now. Your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2. Or he would have said 21 to 50%. It's your tithe. Choose anyone. God is very meticulous and he's exact. 10% is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Another word for the law of Titan is the law of open heavens. It's the spiritual law. One of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens. Not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. 
the law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Question. Answer it. Answer it for yourself. Will a man rob God? It's an encouragement. It was a question, but use it now to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Put your name there where a man is. One to go. Will Joshua Selman rob God? Some of you, as you are saying it, God is saying, you see, this is what has been happening. There are many robbers of God in the house of God. Many robbers of God. And please listen. Some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money. Let me say something. Everybody is an authority somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? A professor is an authority in his field. Not everywhere. Don't listen to garbages by intellectuals. They are not spiritual people. They don't know how heaven's economy works. You cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man. And you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people, because a man is sound intellectually, does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God, and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge. And they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand. This is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ. Being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough. I know that there are abuses here and there. But let me tell you the truth. Any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty scripturally the bible says he that breaks the hedge the serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike are you listening to me please so beware there are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze, they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane. And when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven, they say it's wrong. It may not be wrong. Just say you do not understand. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And there are many of us, especially some of us, as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail. But the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail. Because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is a consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance. That there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing.
blessing. Number three. Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify they will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you. Of your financial prosperity. The first thing that happens. Is that many believers say. If I give. Where will I get another one? Question. How did the first one come? Your tithing. Is a proof of trust. Hallelujah. If you cannot bring out 10%. Of your money and say lord i trust you i come because i love you and i come because i know that your word is true if you're not a faithful tither don't get angry at god many of our parents get angry maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10%. They don't call it tight. But almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10% of their money and they say it's for charity. Are you following me now? If a believer plants during dry season, there is every tendency that you still suffer, although he's a believer. Is that true? If an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season, the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings. This is how lots of unbelievers, they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision. Hallelujah. We're still going to continue, but 
while you are seated in the next two minutes i want you to pray and say lord grace i've not been a faithful title don't bow your head pray pray open your mouth and pray there are many of us some of you outside wherever you are please this is the this is a serious business your children this this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, grace. Say, kata, ba, 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. cry for grace grace oh god from today i make up my mind that i will be a faithful tighter not out of fear not out of religion but out of revelation i see that this is a key i will teach my children how to tight i will teach my workers how to tight i will teach my family members to tight i will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open no power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say lord i'm ready to comply god is more than able before you begin to abuse god and insult him and say he's not helping my family i'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes Business without tithing will end up in failure. Ministry without tithing will end up in failure. A corporation without tithing, a, a non tithing family, uh, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on tithing. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek and the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, there is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then it means you do not trust that He's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the tithe of 1 billion? 100 million. You think you can carry 100 million and just go and give like that? We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace. 
the giving grace there are many people that do not have if you don't have it is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of god and just go and drop no there is a grace that was the grace that was upon the macedonian church that they gave even beyond their limits it's called the giving grace many of us do not have it we are too greedy everything that enters your hand you spend it on every kind of thing sickness disease any other thing but god hallelujah your tithe what is the storehouse very quickly let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all what is the storehouse because the bible says bring the tithe where to the storehouse the house of god so what is the storehouse really in scripture there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse number one god's first idea of a storehouse from the bible is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment are you getting me the place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment for many people is their local assemblies because you know they are there they are committed they are workers in the church and then they are giving number one the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life that becomes the storehouse number two it could be a ministry not necessarily your ministry but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom please get this a ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom there are people for instance that so in their tight into maybe benihin ministry kenneth copeland ministry and it's not their local assembly as it were are you getting my point now but it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning building and equipping believers listen if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening it can affect your harvest it's in the bible it's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive the, the seed will not produce not because it is not good but a poor soil killed it number three now and these ones are they are special situations but i'm going to talk to you the vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual a man of god listen please i want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what i'm saying a, it can be a man of God, a vessel. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now, there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedeko, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this time they don't just go maybe to redeem or kenneth copeland that vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people are you getting my condition now and they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings abraham went to who melchizedek melchizedek was not a city he was a man and he brought his tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him hallelujah There are lots of ministries for instance around that by the grace of god look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves they come and they tighten koinonia here i don't even know this is what they are doing are you getting me but i'm saying whether of these three there are special conditions for the third to occur because there are many men of god who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say i qualify to be the storehouse come and bless i've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse but the house of god is where you must bless 
Is somebody getting blessed? These are the benefits. The first law. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night. Next week, we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation. The principle. The second law is the law of seed time and harvest. The law of increase. The law of giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. Zema katala makuriada malana makuriada. Everybody read. One to read. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that he met. Without it shall be measured unto you again. This is a spiritual law. Genesis 8.22 please. When Noah came out of the ark. The Bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals. Is that true? That, those are the, that's how the animals entered the ark. Seven of the unclean, two of the clean. So when he came out, the Bible says he offered two, two of every animal. That means he offered and finished all the clean animals. How they came back is a technology we must still find out in the Bible. While the earth remained, verse 21, 21 please. Let's start from 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. This was Noah's sacrifice. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. 22. While the earth... That means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains. Seed time and harvest cold and heat god joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work are you getting me the day these three stop that day, no, the law of seed time and harvest has stopped. But from the day they gave birth to you till today, the sun still rises, sets according to our perspective here. There is still cold and there is winter. That means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work. Very, very important. What is the law of seed time and harvest really? What is it? simply put the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving that whatever it is that you give there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you now i'm not talking about money when you give love you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest according to the law of god love will be multiplied and it will come back to you are you getting me when you sow seeds of kindness kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you are you getting what i'm saying that means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith. I'm going to teach you on seed faith. We'll come to seed faith. I'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest. Often called the law of sowing and reaping. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. If you sow to the flesh, you reap to the flesh. Those who live by the sword, they have sown that seed. They will die by the sword. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is a very powerful law. That means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny. Everything that leaves my hand 
goes and as an investment into my future and the bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me that means for all the givings you have done truly if you have not received the harvest god cannot lie expect it it is coming are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose hallelujah he says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the lord in the house of god as much as god has blessed you you should not come to the house of god empty-handed there is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of god please never give just because it's offering time and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that i'm bringing for god so that when it's offering time you're not just looking 100 naira, you return it 50 you return it 20 naira, even the 20 you return the new one and carry one and say oh shall please you just dump the thing there and say lord at least you so no 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 let your heart be in what you are doing when i finish teaching you these principles you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom and you will see why god can punish certain people when they open their mouth castigating blessed people in the kingdom are you seeing now you see that it's not child's play there is what you must do it's not cheap it's not free offerings in the house of god number two i call them kingdom investments your givings for the building of the lord's house kingdom investments every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of god i call them kingdom investments lay up for yourself treasures in heaven kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project ten thousand like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say lord i'm committing myself god is blessing me there is fifty thousand coming in for me maybe five thousand or one thousand i'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments this is for building of the lord's house this is between you and god you see brothers and sisters let me tell you please and please don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people satan doesn't want the church of the lord jesus christ to be blessed there are natural laws we are going to talk about but your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws every unbeliever pastor they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship is that true whether they are business people or whatever once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you see eh? years ago 
I used to play the keyboard for a ministry. A man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. They were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to Obasanjo and all of that. Now they came and they started a ministry in Joss, Pastor. I used to go and play keyboard for them. Listen, nobody ever gave me one naira. Are you getting me? I would trek from my house. Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I will play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you will reap where you sowed. It said you will reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta. I think and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket and I will go there but I was doing it joyfully God is my witness I never complained once to say this man it was even my parents that were saying this, this, this boy is a small boy what is all this one again but I was doing it joyfully but God was watching this is what happened to David while he was tending his fathership God was seeing him and saying I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd many of us when you see certain people you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives there was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing I will bless this guy these are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments, the building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop, time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tight of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because he knows we are humans and he's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight. It's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you. This is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruits? In scripture, the concept of first fruit 
it was ordained by God, it was practiced by the Jews, it was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit, listen, this is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have registered all the members. If you drop your first fruit, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, elder, what is wrong? This is much. You have not dropped anything. They didn't pay you. And it so happens that many churches, the employers and the employees are in the same church. So, and the boss is part of the working committee. You can't lie that they didn't pay you. You see, all those kind of things. So let's get it very straight here. Does first fruit exist? Yes. But listen, is first fruit compulsory? No. The same way saying is bathing compulsory? No. But not bathing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol, is a prophetic way of honoring God and showing him, I'm sorry, that he's first in your life. Are you listening to me? first in your life that when you take your first fruit and now I'll, I'll explain it in details and give the lord and say lord i'm honoring you maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take you to God and everything and all of that. It's, it's not just about giving God money. It's about telling God that you are first in my life. Are you getting the concept now? So if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people say very wicked people. I hate January. Every January is the time they eat our money. No. Understand the spirit behind what you are doing. Bless you. If you do not practice first fruit. It doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? Your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors. The kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually first fruit please never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a cause to say sam i'm waiting for your first fruit if by next week you don't bring it upon this altar i will stand on this altar and provoke a car please don't let anybody confuse you there are many people there are many men of God that are bullies. They bully members with all kinds of prophetic prophetic messages and they get it very serious. They say, I saw a vision. A curse was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit, they were affected and everybody just runs around and says, carry and give him, please. Just give him less rest. Everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll just leave it there. So first fruit is very important. As you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving, you see, that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith. There are many people, their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things. So don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress. There are certain laws he's practicing. Please, are you getting me? I don't want to go into so much detail. I'm just giving you what we need here. The last one that I'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering. People have suffered because of this thing. Let's clarify it once and for all. Is there such a thing as prophet's offering? Are you blessed tonight by what I'm teaching you? Praise the Lord. Two scriptures. 2 Kings 8 from verse 8 and 9. What is prophet's offering? Now look up. In ancient times, listen please. In ancient times, prophets or oracles of God as we know, men who communicated the counsel of God, be it from the Levitical priesthood and all of that, because they ministered in the house of God perpetually. Are you getting what I'm saying now? 
they had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things other secular activities things have changed now but they did not have that opportunity are you following me now and so there were ordinances from god that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of god a true man of god to go and meet him just empty-handed like that that it does not command honor you don't honor god you don't honor him are you getting my point now and the king said unto hazael listen they wanted to go, they were looking for this was um this was um was it hezekiah now i believe whoever it was the king praise god <laughs> take a present are you seeing it now take a present in your hand where's my present take a present in your hand and go meet the man of god and inquire of the lord of him saying shall i recover from this disease the king told the man don't go and meet a man of god empty-handed he said take something in your hand as a sign of honor are you getting me when it was time for jacob to enter his proof i mean for isaac to enter um isaac to now bless his sons is that true the bible says he told his son go and make me venison bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me are you getting what i'm saying the king said take something in your hand don't go and meet the man of god empty-handed so we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering an offering something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of god first samuel 9 verse 3 to 13 i'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then we'll wrap up for for today first samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13 this was the encounter and the asses of kish saul's father were lost so something was lost they needed a breakthrough in their life please listen i want to teach you a powerful principle there is still the law of seed faith we are coming there but i want to teach you one very powerful principle and they were lost so they needed a miracle and he said to saul his son take now one of the servants with you arise and go and look for the asses verse 4 and he passed through the mount ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that but they did not find it verse 5 and when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, All that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him so they were confused they needed breakthrough in their life are you getting me now this was saul and a servant and he said let's go back our father will be worried he said no in this city there is a man of god there is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem he said let's go and meet him the word of the lord comes to, to pass in his life he said peradventure he can show us our way that we should go verse 7 i want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient. And that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? Are you seeing now? They knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of God just empty-handed to say, We have come to meet you and, and all of that. He said, For the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God what have we verse verse 8 now and the servant answered Saul again and said behold I have here a ha in at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give the man of God to tell us our way are you following me and so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called Saul an anointed Saul are you getting what i'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of god with honor knowing listen knowing that god can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today 
in our day is the concept of prophet offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you they'll say mr man hold your thirty thousand. there are even those who have put their bill they have suffered enough they said look i won't be foolish again prophecy thirty thousand. this and that and that and it's working for certain people they may not be necessarily fake but i think it's inaccurate are you getting my point money and anointing does not mix together people are supposed to do things out of revelation however on your own part i never go and meet a man of god higher than me without nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not threatening you and say start packing god has blessed me god doesn't owe me anything at all are you getting my point now so don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people no no my blessing is not tied to you my blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles imagine if god if i was totally dependent on you for my blessing i would have died by now <laughs> ah yeah yeah but god is faithful praise the lord do you believe what i'm sharing with you i will never go and meet a man of god higher than me even if he's just to greet even if he comes into a city there are men that i hear that just came into zaria for a program i'm not even related i'll package something maybe a tie or wine or something i'll say quickly take it to that man of god just tell them i went to i, I want to greet them or sometimes i can just put recharge card quickly one five or something is the law of honor i've taught you this commanding results is the law of honor if you've been doing it stop it many of us on your way to go and see a man of god you branch a a, a restaurant chicken republic you blow five thousand there you finish eating and you belt you say hey by now let's just go and see him and you get up and come and you even sit down sir things are not changing you say god will bless us and you know i'm not talking of me is is very bad is dishonoring very dishonoring so while on one side we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift it means the anointing will not flow he will not bless you that's erroneous but let me encourage you i want to encourage you have it as a spiritual culture beyond koinonia you will provoke lots of things there are places i go to minister and i tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me i find out that there are unusual open heavens even certain things that i don't want to share i find myself sharing it a seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people he said honor your father and your mother it's a law honor people hallelujah praise the lord many of you have never blessed a man of god see i say this it's just because i have to teach you you don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night i've said it and said it some of you don't even know our birthdays you don't even know my birthday to say kai this person is doing all of this some of you try to call and i caught the call and for one hour you're just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering you know this very unemotional attitude there are many families like that they gather their whole family we are coming for deliverance we are coming for this and the man just comes where do i sit down and they sit down the wife too sits down demons are disturbing us in this house we have that uh, is it the deliverance ministry or what is it and you know they are talking is very wrong very wrong no man or not the man of god in scripture and did not have anything you are not buying the miracle but i'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings when jacob brought the venison for isaac when he took off the venison it provoked a blessing from within him hallelujah i've shared with you my story on how i packaged a very dangerous seed and i left to canaan land 
Hallelujah. I went to go and honor God's servant here. I didn't get to meet with him, but I still went to practice that law of honor. And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I came out from there, praise God, when I came out from there, I was to enter the car and the Holy Ghost told me, come out. And I came out, he said, kneel down. I laid my hands there. He said, from today, every city you go, the heavens will be open to you. The same way you are seeing it here. So when you see a reproduction of certain things, understand that there are laws that work. There are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed. They just look, how are these people doing it? These guys, they must be fetish. That's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves. You were not there when we were praying the price. But you now see the reward and begin to criticize. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are spiritual laws. There are spiritual laws. One of the reasons why this ministry will never go down is because we sow into your life. There are bosses here. You know, sometimes people ask me, they say, why do you spend so much money on bosses? You don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses, chairs outside and the rest. Sometimes I come and I rebuke the protocol people and I tell them, why are there some people standing? Go and get more chairs. Hallelujah. And they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more. I say, still go and get it. It's the law of honor. That I'm a man, I don't know what grace you carry. It's everybody sitting here, you are a bank of grace. It's a privilege that I'm standing here ministering to you. I will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something. Many of you are product of different anointings. Some people have spoken certain blessings into your life. As a ministry, we are humble enough to tap into it. And we tap into it by sowing into your life. Are you listening to me? When we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry, we looked at Koza, the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted. We carried all the leaders, all the heads of departments, and the ministers and myself. We went to Abuja. Some of you were there. We lodged in a very expensive hotel. It cost us so much, but it was the law of honor. Let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Honor. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there. When we finished everything, the pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seen on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there and they spoke to us. We have seen certain levels of excellence, but when we came back, we came with a spirit and an anointing. Many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of God. You are not... See, the way many pastors suffer in many ministries. God blesses you. Ministers are here suffering, speaking over your life. Let me tell you, if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials, while you are sleeping, we are awake. The Bible says, he that ministers to you in spiritual things. You should minister to the person in carnal things. The carnal there doesn't mean fleshly. Make it a, a point, a duty in your life. That everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of God there. Practice the law of honor. As much as possible. Please don't feel bad from today to say, okay, you are coming to greet me. I don't have anything. Don't feel guilty at all. Are you getting me? But I'm teaching you. There are many people who don't have the means sincerely, but I'm teaching you is a law. Begin to practice it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one time I went for a ministration in, in a particular city. I won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings. And I was so humiliated. Pastor, I felt so bad. I said, Lord, this is not fair. When I went to that city where they kept me, I was going to ask the people and say, please, where is... A very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam 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 she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen 
I'm trying to communicate a point. She brought this whole thing and I just sat down. I greeted her. She didn't even answer. Dropped everything and then she sped out. I opened it. They made indomie and one egg with la casera. I had spent that day. It was a very far city. I said, Lord, is it that I could not take care of myself? You have been faithful to me. What is all of this? I don't take indomie. I don't take la casera. Listen. I need to say this. If this is all I say, we'll, we'll round up now and pray. There are many of you who want to invite a man of God. Don't bring a man that your, your financial, if you cannot honor his grace, be patient. There are so many people that want to bring men of God. I want to bring this. We must bring this person. You are not ready to cater and take. You bring any man and humiliate him. You will bring war on yourself. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. I had to go and buy malt that night. I just bought malt, I took it, I gave thanks and honestly I was not offended. Praise God. The next day nothing, there was no breakfast, they didn't ask whether I'm fasting or I want to eat. Later they just came, they said we have come. The car, they carried me, they chartered one car, at least do something presentable. Are you getting my point? It was hot, it was horrible, I was humiliated. I said, goodness, what is this, oh God? I said, well Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm. I went and it was a great meeting. God blessed all the people. I paid my flight ticket from here to the place and I did everything. When I finished, by afternoon, they brought all cross soup for me and something, you know, they just came and dropped it. You know this, this, um, this cooler, this one, that, this small one, that's what they just came and dropped. And uh, three or four pure water or something. I said, what is this? I'm not exaggerating. It was a humiliating experience and I spent three days there. On the third day when I was done, I was happy, I laughed. Do you know what happened? I, I want to tell you the pain of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things. Don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic. Praise the Lord. After this, we'll rise up and pray. This is what happened. And when I got, when I finished everything, the people came, they were all pinching themselves. I told them, please, I need to catch my flight. I, I had misery. I wanted to come back fast. Hallelujah. And then when it was time, the president just came. The envelope that they put the honorarium, you will know that it was not organized. One, you know envelope that they've written something, then you just strike it. I'm serious. And he carried it and package it was not up to even half of my flight ticket he just brought it and said sorry you know that we are we are starting we are managing and all of that and i just blessed him blessed everything and sold it back into them not because i was angry imagine if i had left everything and i came by faith are you getting me now that i came by faith and say i'm going to bless these people some of you do not know the pain there are many men of god that are bleeding there are many people that are punishing themselves, investing in the house of God. You forget that these people have lives. Are you getting my point now? While you are sleeping, they are praying for It's a different thing if they are not serious. But where you see a man that is committed to your spiritual development, let me tell you, you rob yourself of certain dimensions if you do not bless them. Again, if you don't believe this, there is no problem. But I'm teaching you a very powerful principle. I always seek to give and not to take. This is why you see certain people entering some strange order of blessings. It works. Never invite a man of God you are not ready to honor his grace. If you don't have the means, be patient. Don't come and humiliate a man. A man has a wife. He has children. He must pay the school fees of those people. He's commit. This is why a lot of men of God get into all kinds of manipulation because of the pain they are going through. The, he now comes back home and the wife is saying, Honey, well done. No, three days. I missed you. How far? No, nothing for the soup. And the man says, Man, God was glorified. The wife said, Okay, so where will we be glorified now? We have glorified God. Hallelujah. Prophet's offering is real. It exists. Next week, we'll take it up from there. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray and say, Lord, thank you for your word. Our time is fast spent. Just bless the Lord. Tell him, Lord, we bless you. 
Lord, we bless you. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you for your word, the law of tithing, your giving, your offerings, your kingdom investments. The honor that you bring to the vessels that God blesses you pray and say lord the giving grace lift your voice and pray the giving grace let it man to me right now the giving grace that grace to give that grace to give the grace to tithe the grace to sow the grace to commit myself in your house go ahead and pray when you pray that prayer no power in existence will stop you i'm telling you you're on your way to financial dominion pray yes lord thank you many of you is a mind shift that has happened to you tonight i know our time is far spent but it's worth it because what you have received now no man can take away from you hallelujah Bless us tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be honored. Hallelujah. How many of you know this song? I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord, who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved. Come on, sing the Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. Blessed. Lord reign at one more time with faith in your heart. The Lord Blessed be the rock. Be the rock. Let, the rock of my salvation Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reign Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of my Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. You're not just singing a chorus. Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted in my life. salvation the Bible says call unto me Jeremiah 33 verse 3 said and I will answer I will show you great and mighty things that you know not and so Lord we thank you honestly we thank you and tonight you will exalt yourself in the lives of many people in this place you will be exalted you will be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's good to visit these very deep, powerful hymns. They were not written by hungry people. They were not producing albums. Hallelujah. Some of these hymns were written by people who were very, very powerful people they knew god personally they were not just trying to do the kind of jamboree that we do in church today hallelujah 
And it was from the depth of their experiences that they wrote certain songs. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we sing one more song? Be lifted high. Can you lift your hands as you sing this song? Lord, we exalt him. We're singing songs that lift him high. Listen to what you are singing. You're righteous. There is no deceit in you. Now sing it with faith in your heart. Believe that I. Oh Lord, be lifted I for you are holy. Righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hope ten people tell them you're welcome. It's good to see you. And be gloriously seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. We have a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. A lot to do tonight. God is desperate to make sure somebody has a testimony in this place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're rounding up our family life series today. It's going to be powerful. Psalms 128. Tonight, we are going to cause the yoke of delay in marriage once and for all. I'm serious. Don't think we are playing. We don't just talk stories in this place. We are going to confront. We are confronting the gates of hell in a way that will shock you tonight. This is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are going to destroy a lot of things that have tied people's marital destinies. Let me tell you something. If you came here just drowsy and sleepy, wake up. Today's service is not the type you sleep in. Because whatever has refused to respond to your life and to your marital destiny will change tonight. Some of you will be standing for your loved ones. Could this be the answer to your prayer and fasting? So make sure that you are wide awake. If your neighbor is disturbing him, say, neighbor, we didn't pay money for this place. So behave yourself. Hallelujah. Psalms 128. Psalms 128 verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Say, I'm blessed. Because I fear the Lord. Say one more time. I am blessed because I fear the Lord. He says that walketh in his ways. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Who is God speaking to tonight? He said for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be and it shall be well with you. Are you ready now? Verse 3. Brothers, can you say amen? amen. Thy wife. That means you will be married. I curse. Listen, listen. He says thy wife. He didn't say a stranger that is roaming around your house without identity. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Hold on. He didn't say your wife shall be as a vine because Jesus saw a fig tree that didn't bear fruit. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. By thy side, no divorce. This is not the issue of fighting. He said, by thy side. And the last time I read my Bible, my Bible says Jesus was standing at the right side of the Father. 
they've not had any issue there there has not been need to separate themselves hallelujah everybody say thy children i tell you the truth the devil that is a, is is responsible for the barrenness of people and families i'm going to be teaching shortly and we'll be praying this night light and darkness will clash one must bow this night i told you this is this is pre-miracle service hallelujah he says thy children like olive plants round about your table organize discipline visionary children not pouts not thieves not troublemakers not terrorists he said they'll be round about your table not in prison cells they will be round about your table verse 4 behold that thus shall be blessed that means this is a portrait this is how you will know that a man is blessed of the lord he said whenever you see a man organized married with his wife by his side well-behaved children sitting around a table that means there is prosperity there he said when you see that this is a portrait of god's idea of a blessed family say amen, amen. father we ask you tonight in the name of jesus do something in this place you told me you will shake tear down altars lord it's time to let your people go maritally we are we are here tonight to confront the gates of hell and release your people enough is enough it's good to have testimonies of cars healings miracles but god wants you to be blessed maritally in the name of jesus christ amen praise god genesis 128 i'll be talking about three things and then we'll pray straight away hallelujah And God blessed them. Say, and God blessed them. And said unto them, number one, number two, be fruitful, multiply. It says, replenish the earth, subdue it. Why will he say subdue it? Because there is an adversary roaming around. It says subdue, in other words, exact authority over him. And have dominion over the fish and all of that and all of that. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, how many of you have been blessed by the Family Life series? We started talking about a lot of things. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we have been able to cover some grounds. Remember our five love languages, the love and respect principle. For many of you who have not been around, please get it. It's very serious, very comprehensive. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk briefly. I'll talk on three subtopics. Number one, the reason why people experience late or no marriage. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Hallelujah. This is not so much of a teaching because I'm, I'm in a hurry to finish. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Honestly, I want to pray. We need to tear down walls because some of you have suffered things that the devil must repay back. A hundredfold, pressed down, shaken together. See, the Bible says if you catch a thief, you won't just say, sorry, I, I won't do it again. No, no. The Bible doesn't deal with thieves like that. It says if you catch a thief, who is a thief? Who is a thief? No, no, no. I didn't say who is the thief. Who is a thief generally? one who lays claim and steals what is not his own there are many people that would have been enjoying the bliss of joy in their marriage and their family and the devil has taken a lot of things many of you have been helpless people think you are careless but tonight i tell you we will expose that devil god showed me this thing by now you should know when you hear me talking like this i've seen something hallelujah the reason why people experience late or no marriage before we talk about satan we want to address a few things the number one reason is unreasonable expectations everybody right unreasonable ridiculous expectations hallelujah please look up i found out that one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot get married 
is that their expectations are unrealistic. Hallelujah. Especially for ladies. When you ask certain ladies, ah, what kind of guy do you want to marry? They say, Mio. The way I am like this. Even if that guy, he must be six feet three. Six feet 2.9. is not for me. He should be able to smile and be very nice. He should be able to speak Queen's English, not, not L-E-A English that is just basic enough to pass, to get, um, what the, what's that? <laughs> School living certificate. The guy must be able to have a good sense of color combination. He must be able to have this. There's, I have no problem against your list. The only question I have is, when will he have these things? Before or during or, if you wish, after the marriage. There's nothing wrong with having these wonderful expectations. My only question is, when? Hallelujah. So, all the brothers that have come, 58 over 60, F9. 59 over 60, F9. 40 over 60, F9. Hallelujah. Unreasonable expectations. There are many people, especially ladies, the, the way, the expectations you have carved out for yourself, the only person that fits that expectation is Jesus Christ. No mortal man can fit that expectation. Today you see somebody that looks nice tomorrow and say, mm -mm, I don't like the way the guy smiles. Why is he too loud? And I want somebody that is... Ah. One man said the best way to predict your future is to create it. So that you don't disturb anybody. Create it by yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. <laughs> Me have suffered in my life where I must marry a millionaire. I must marry a millionaire. There's no, you know when they are taking people for a job, they say you are a driver, you must have five years experience. Some of you, you must have five years experience with prosperity. You must know how to do this and that. He must have his duplex, so I'm not ready to manage inside one room that will be squeezing me. As you are laughing tonight, take it seriously because we have to solve. Some of us are the ones who open doors for delay in marriage financial status oh he must be no no, no i'm he's still under unreasonable expectations financial status brother where are you working there's one primary school here the primary school me i i'm I, your father has warned you your mother has warned you they say don't bring any teacher for us here i was a teacher your mother was a teacher change and now you are waiting, you are hoping. Oh, Shell, NMPC. Where again? Say it. Chevron. Uh huh. Sir? Mobile. Look at the lady smiling. CBN. Nigerian Printing and Minting Company. Then go take group. And some of you are happy. Oh, this is the kind. I want somebody that when I stand by him. People will say, Kai, how did God locate you like this? Remember our song? I didn't know you will answer me this way. Listen, while that vision is good, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that with this kind of mindset, you will never be able to get married to the right person. You know why? Because oftentimes, God will tell you, go to your farm and harvest your crop. You will get to the farm and see a bag of seeds. Are you listening to me? With hoe on it and grace. These are the three things you will find there. But God told you, go and get a harvest. It is in God's nature to speak and call things as though they have already happened. So God will tell you a millionaire is coming to your life. And you just see a brother come and say, brother, where are you going? He says, shoemaker. He says, ah, God, this does not look like the prophecy. 
unreasonable expectations. Physical appearance. I want somebody who is this and that. I want somebody, guys, I want a lady with this and that. I want a lady with dimples. I want a lady with another dimple here. I want a lady with dimple here. I don't want a lady that opens her mouth too wide. What are you looking for? Hallelujah. I want a lady whose hair, you know this Indian film they used to act. I want a lady whose hair is here. Hallelujah. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. I want a lady who is a top chef who has been validated by everybody to be able to eat. I want a lady who can drive. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. Unreasonable expectation. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, there was one funny film they used to show. Very nice and pretty. What's the name? Another Life. Man, some of you don't know it. Don't claim you know it. Some of you, where were you then? <laughs> another Life. Hear the name, Seth. Who will use that kind of name now? Media, that Another Life. They're using Second Chance and the rest. And I remember every time I saw some of the people, the, the actors and all of that, I used to look at them and say, ah, especially those who were wicked, they were not very good looking. And it used to pain me in the soap opera. And then one poor village, pretty lady is the one that will keep telling lies, oppressing and doing all of that. I hated soap operas because I said, ah, why is it that they find very nice ladies and all of that? And as small as all, I had a dream. And my dream was that one day, one of the person who was acting, that by God's grace, if I may, oh... <laughs> Bible says when I was a child. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. My simple message for you tonight is that it does not happen before relationship. You say, ah, but does that is what let me tell you something. Any success you did not invest in it, you are not qualified to partake. That's why there are some men that only married. There are some, come now, sweetheart, drop your Bible. There are, some, there are some men who get married to a lady. They are married though. But this lady is like a stranger. You know why? The guy was already a multi-millionaire. And she's just one of the many things that happened to enter his life. Are you following me now? She has her room. The only thing he does is to sleep with her. That's all. And that's even when he wants. He's like the kings of old. So she's just roaming around like a nanny and a house girl. In her. That's, not, that's not a good home. Are you hearing me? Children say, mommy, one banana. I say, mm, go and ask your father. Me, ma, they brought me inside this house. <laughs> me, ma, I'm inside this house. No confidence. You know why? You were looking for something that could not be found. And since you found what looked like it, you have to pay the price there. But a brother that you were there with them, you soaked Gary together. He said, how much do you have now? Don't worry. See, I don't have anything, but I'm speaking God's word. And you can see me. I'm showing you the blueprint of what I'm doing. Now you brought the Gary. We drank together. Do you think if we enter the... What car now? Say something realistic. Don't tell me limousine. Say something realistic, please. A good car. When we enter a good car, listen... Do you think, listen, do you think this lady will be carried away by my prosperity? Because we have been there. Are you listening? You grew into this thing together. Many of you don't want to grow into the blessings of marriage. Some of the wealthy people we know today, ask them. When they got married, the man didn't even have a bicycle. He didn't even have vision for some of them. Just one fellowship, they were strolling one day and God caught him. God filled with the Holy Ghost. God started working. But now, the woman is partaking of the blessings. Whether you like the madam or not, she owns the company with her husband. Because they suffered. And she can look at you and tell you, I remember those days. Don't celebrate success that does not have history. It's fake. 
any success that does not have history is fake. I assure you, if you are laughing, hold on, stop laughing. Any true success must have history. It is the history that will preserve you in that realm of success. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Unreasonable expectations. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I set realistic standards. Refer to our message, um, I think that's um, Family Life 2. We, we stated some very clear and reasonable standards. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. What you want does not exist for many of you. So you must come down and believe. It's still part of this running away from responsibility. Many people don't want to build. Many ladies don't want to build. What if I build this thing and later he says I'm not the one? The Bible didn't say you will reap where you sow. It said you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Number two. Now this is important. Please everybody listen. Health factors. One of the reasons why people do not get married or they marry late. Of recent, this has become a very, if you are involved in any kind of marriage counseling or maybe in your church and all of that, you know that this is a very big issue. Is that true? Health factors, the issue of genotypes, blood groups. I want you to listen very well. Because for you, what brought you to the sister is beauty and the vision you saw. For your mother or for your father, they know the things that they've had to endure or somebody they know. Are you listening to me? So they have parameters that may not appeal to you. Are you listening to me? Is someone following? Genotype. What do you do? Listen. What do you do when someone who is of a genotype SS, alright? Now you meet this sister, you love her, two of you are getting together and then you find out that she's also SS. What do you do? And the thing has entered two of you. You have told yourself, do or die. Hallelujah. Now you've gone to meet the marriage council on your church and they say, Tor, listen, no. we had the story of so-so-so person like this. And they didn't listen to us. They gave birth to five children. The five children all died. Are you ready for all of these things? You know, is someone getting blessed tonight? These are not issues we young people consider. Ah, Ibuku, Jesus Christ, let Ibuku answer me, oh. Hallelujah. Many of us are too afraid to even consider this thing. Say, look, let's just move. Let's not spoil what God is trying to arrange here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Health factors, blood groups, genotypes. These have become very serious issues. In many churches, I know that this, this thing varies from church to church. Is that true? And I know that there are rules already in some churches. They don't take it. They don't care what you saw or what you had, or how long you have been together. Once they find out that your genotypes are not compatible, they advise you strongly and guide you towards leaving one another. They say, no, please, we can't take it. We are not ready. And from the human perspective, please listen, because some of you have insulted all these people. Let me tell you something. From the human perspective, History has shown us that these kinds of things have brought a lot of problems for families. SS marries SS or AS marries this and then they have children who keep dying or children who are having, you know, a lot of problems. The father has problems, the mother has problems and, you know, in quotes, they become like a liability to a lot of people. Family members, loved ones, they now kick the man out of his job. Now, what do you do? Look up because some of you probably are in that situation right now as I'm speaking and you're trusting God for guidance. So, your father or mother said, see you, this guy, you won't marry the person. For 10 years, you poor are together. They say, I won't you marry. They say, don't worry, we're organizing things. I say, this is what is happening. Late marriage or no marriage. This is one very serious reason. Now, if you don't believe in the supernatural, here's my kind advice. Quietly live. Did you hear what I said? I'm giving you an advice that may not make sense now. But I'm a, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what did I advise? It is my advice. I didn't say God told me. Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. 
you may have your relationship programs and somebody may have another opinion the reason is because listen if you do not believe in the supernatural what the medical science said will happen will happen are you listening to me and you will live your remaining 30 40 or 50 life uh, or 50 years in misery and pain let me tell you the truth i've had the opportunity to pray for people and families with these kinds of things and i know that this is not nice there are situations where the whole family father mother and the one or two sons they are all down what do you do and for the rest of your life there is torture from your family members we told you how many of you know that kind of thing well thank god we have married people we told you aaron we warned you benga you didn't hear you were in love now see see what has happened if you believe in the supernatural you will get up and do something about it hello that kind of supernatural that God will change it when he wants to change it. Uh -uh. That's not a valid supernatural. Alright? So, come sweetheart again. Now, I'm SS, she's SS. Both of you have come and you have, you have found out that this is a serious constraint. But both of you are convinced. Listen, let me tell you. I hope you know God is not an author of confusion. And I hope you know miracles still work. We have seen genotypes blood groups whatever change here so many of them now what what you would do listen i'm telling you what to do straight to the point you agree and say look do you believe this can work because if you are the only one who believes it the lady already in her mind she has left you she doesn't just want to embarrass you are you following me now you say let's pray ah, the lady goes back and says brother john i've not really left you it's just that let's be patching it things are getting messy here now you know ladies have a very funny way of putting one leg here they can detect when the bridge starts breaking they won't tell you they will just stretch their leg london bridge is falling down so they'll, they'll just be patched so that whatever happens they can wage themselves quickly if you are involved in that repent tonight in jesus name double dating is wrong period I don't care what you have, what you, you watched in your Nigerian film and soup opera. What Oprah Winfrey told you, Niger uh, what, I want to say Nigerian film is wrong. I like Nigerian films. Don't... Double dating is period. Hallelujah. Do you, the Bible says, can two walk together except the Amos 3.3. 3. So you must agree. Sweetheart, do you believe? That God, are you convinced about this thing? Think about it again. If she needs time, don't be angry. She said, honestly, see, let me tell you something. Um, can you give me three days? Yeah, yeah. I've known three days. You don't, uh -uh. You, this, is, this is a very, very serious issue. Don't just get emotional and start shouting at the lady. Say, now, nah, I'm agreeing. You are refusing. We have not even married. We're already quarreling. No, no. But if, listen, if you think both of you can work this out. Can I tell you something? Seek advice and start working it early. Is that true? Because there are some of us that are very stubborn and have gotten ourselves in trouble. No! This is the guy your parents say, why don't see? Let me tell you. I believe in the words of elder so. I hope you're hearing me. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes parents may not know why they are saying what they are saying. But I tell you, there is a depth of wisdom. You are, you are, remember our emotional obsession teaching. Ay! This thing is burning you. As your father or your mother is talking, it's entering here, flying out there. You are not hearing, no. Fix this wedding date. Let's do this thing and let the devil be put to shame. But they are telling you, listen, listen. You will get married, you will dance that day, cut cake, and everybody will go. The people who come for your wedding, see, there is a difference between wedding and marriage. Correct? Yes. Wedding is valid for 24 hours. Your marriage begins. Fry plantain for me, honey, I'm down. No, no, please. I'm working in this house to bring money. Me too, am I not suffering what you are suffering? This is how the trouble starts. So if you know, if you think you can believe God for it, Honestly, I'm giving you a very honest and fair advice. Many men of God will spiritualize this thing I'm saying. 
and just tell you, don't worry, things, just believe, claim it, take it. Mm -mm. It has led to a lot of casualties. If both of you cannot believe God for it, cry, fast, have your last supper, and end the relationship. Don't break it. Believers don't break relationships. They end it with wisdom and grace and bless one another. But if you can believe God for it, then start making efforts. When it's time for miracle service, you say, ah, where are you? you say, I'm in the market. Say, leave that market. Oh, leave that market. We have something both of us have agreed upon. God will give you the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Right? Let's hurry up. Number three, geographic, cultural, and family factors. Right? Why do people experience late marriages or why don't people there are some families your parents have already given you warning right from when you were in primary school you didn't even understand what they were saying they said see bring you know this globe that is in our house map of the world they zoomed it to nigeria they said any state i draw a pen let me not see you there are you ready yes number one number two there are parents of, there are geographic factors that even in the same state, they tell you it's not enough. Is that correct? In fact, some, even in the same village, they say, uh-uh, this clan had this, this, in 1921, they had a problem. Now, let me explain something you, that many people may not understand. You see, during the time of our parents, the world was not as heterogeneous as it is right now. Is that correct? Many people live in yards and compounds. All the ladies used to go to the stream together. So the guys could time. Natina. They could just see and know that, okay, in the next 10 years, let me just allow this investment to grow. In the next 10 years, I can be able to come and... So, they knew themselves. The parents knew the parents of the other person. Is that correct? They fought together. They celebrated festivals together. They did a lot of things together. So when you came and told your father that, ah, it's Grace now, Mario. Where is Grace from? Sokoto, they say, ah, where exactly? Say, ah, I know the father now. Give me five. You're a very nice guy. This is the kind of thing we want. Geographic factors. What is the probability of finding somebody from your village who is born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed, visionary? What is the probability? I, I, no, I want you to be very honest and realistic. What is the probability? So in our generation, there will be a lot of crossing of boundaries. Some of you, they wiped your whole village in war. You don't even, you practically don't have a village again. You put migrated somewhere. So when your father or your mother is saying they should get somebody, from where? The old republic, your old place or the new one? Some migrated to Cameroon. Some ran, you know, all of these things. Full of, there are full of people that ran to Sokoto, some to Maiduguri, some to Gombe. So when you are saying a full of, from where? You must marry a full of you. Benga, a full of or nothing else. Which one? Because they've scattered to different places. Hallelujah. It's my personal opinion that that should not be a factor. However, listen, you, you know that I will always balance things. Are you ready now? Some of you are already sad looking at me. Ah. This is the reason why some people have not married. Sister Mary, ha -ha, till now, see my third child, oh, say I must wait until my change comes. Since you were in the university, now both of you are doctors, not in. Say I'll wait, oh, I will wait. cultural factors, geographic factors. And for many of the things that our parents do, what is their, 
I hope you know their, their excuses are legitimate. But we know more now. Are you following me? What's their excuse? When there is trouble, when there is fight, when you tear yourselves into pieces, they know your father, they know your mother, they can come and sit down. But where you cross boundary, Lagos and Maiduguri, who knows who there? They fought during the traditional wedding and promised themselves they will never look at themselves again. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? Some of you don't believe. I'm advising you, you better free your spirit now. I'm giving you the reasons before we pray. Open your mind and say, Lord, you will not destroy me. For the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. For other, other places, the parents say, ah, the people in this place, they are witches and wizards. Let me tell you something straight to the point the official religion of africa was witchcraft every tribe every state everywhere is that clear so don't start saying this state they are every who doesn't know them eh? now you want to bring trouble for us as if it was missionaries that started your own state now look let me tell you something witchcraft idolatry was the bane of the day in nigeria everywhere every street has traditionalists herbalists has people who are practicing witchcraft killing people eating whatever it is it's just that some have more than some but everybody has it are, are you listening to me i'm very serious please as you're laughing i hope you're getting me so don't ever use that as an excuse. Say these people, everybody from their village. They, no. And now listen, our parents, listen, our parents have had so many experiences that validate their claims. So while you are trying to defend yourself, don't just look at them and say old generation. Because I tell you something, they have testimonies of people who did not listen. Are you following me now? And they got married running down the line 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them are still suffering today. So don't just kick what the parents are saying. Can I give you an advice? If you are crossing boundaries, know three things. Number one. Number one. Wickedness, territorial wickedness is real. Write it and never forget it. If you are crossing boundary to any state or any local government, be aware of the demonic predicaments around that place. And be sure that you are ready to take the burden. Please look up. I want to be very, very, I want to speak to you tonight. Look up, please. A lady, for instance, whose whole family, she has an extended family, all right? And say they are all Muslims. Are you following me now? And only the lady got born again. Are you listening to me? Maybe her father is this and that, her mother. There are a lot in their families. Now you are coming as a brother. You say, this is the lady I'm going to marry. I hope you know that there is a battle to fight there. Everybody answer me. If you pretend and spiritualize it and trivialize it, you are going to run into a lot of trouble. Is the battle because the lady is bad? No, but you see, when you are married, you are not just married to the lady, you are married to the lady and everything associated to her. Are you listening to me? To her troublesome auntie, her diabolic uncle, they are all your relatives now. Her money mongering cousins, her materialistic nephews, all together. That's why they sold the Ashoke for you to see them on the wedding day. We are now one. Hallelujah. So when you are crossing boundaries, be very realistic. I'm telling you, be very what? One lady called me one time and I won't mention names, but her father is a bishop. You know, somewhere, I think somewhere around the maybe southern eastern side. And she told me that 
the guy baths all his daughters with chicken before giving them out for marriage. The lady now, sorry. Are you listening to me? The elder sister, the father at her age, oh, whether whatever you he said, daddy, he said, look, you don't know what you grew up with. You are, we are the ones that have suffered this thing. Just keep quiet and let me bath you and you will go. So when it was the lady's turn now, she ran out of the house. So it was during her exodus that she called me. And she said, this is what they want to do to me. I said, you mean it? They said, they must do it. There is a covenant that had been running around their family that that's what they must do. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. So the man must bath them with chicken as they are, bath, they are making incantations. So they bath the lady. Her elder sister told her, I said, this is what I did though. That what they planned with the fiance is that immediately they finish. They just run mountain of fire straight. Lagos about that express with straight. They went there for deliverance. So they said, if you can do it. But the lady said, but I see, it's not like I'm in ignorance. This is taking myself to go and give the devil. Are you following me now? This is the reason why certain parents may not want people from certain places. That leads me to the fourth point, demonic oppression. The reason why people do not get married, demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. We live in a church that is so unaware of the activities of Satan. We are all new creation in Christ. The Bible says do not be unaware. I know people have exaggerated things when it comes to Satan and the things of deliverance. But let me tell you something. Demonic oppression is real. Especially in marriage. Are you hearing me? I'm giving you a frank and candid advice. When you see us say, go out with somebody who is born again and serious with God. Some of you think, okay, you know, these guys have been... Demonic oppression is real. The euphoria of your emotional attachment will fade when those demons begin to deal with you. Hallelujah. Let me stop there. Second subtopic. So this is why people experience late marriage. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations, health factors, geographical factors, demonic oppression. If you don't believe in marrying people from other places, pray. You can negotiate with God. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. If the trouble is too much, you can say, God, can you give me a brother from Kano that loves God? I'm from there, for God's sake. Save me this headache. God will bring a brother. He will come for koinonia. You won't know what is bringing him. The answer to so God, No, God is faithful. Let me tell you, our relationship with God is on a personal basis. There is a way you can agree with God on some things and he will do it for you. I assure you. Hallelujah. Have I helped you? Because some of you are saying, can't we bend? You mean there's no way out? There is a way. There is a way. It's between you and God. Number two. The reasons for fight in homes and unfaithfulness. Marital fights and unfaithfulness. It's one thing to get married. It's another thing to live in that home. Is that true? Many of our homes and our marriages are shattered in pieces. And we need to find out what is wrong. Why do we have fights? Two people. Sorry. Do you accept this? What? You didn't wait for them to finish talking. Do you take this lady as your wedding? Yes. Yes. You far by the grace of God, yes. Two of you said you would you are you doing yes. Think about it. Oh, yes. Does anybody have anything any, against this marriage? Nobody's now. We declare you husband and wife. You are hugging and kissing, and you are happy. Two years later, the man looks at you. Who did I marry? He wrote songs, called you the lily of the valley, called you all kinds of things. Sugar in his tea. Mosquito in his net. After two years, three years, there is fight. Can I tell you something? Let me run faster than myself and tell you 
Sex is not enough to preserve the strength of marriage. Because I have seen people with eight children. How did they get the eight children? I will kill you. This is a man that slept with his wife to have eight children. Now he will kill her. Hallelujah. So what are the reasons? Do you know, listen, statistic tells us that one out of every two marriages in America ends up in a divorce within the first five years. Right now, this thing has gotten so bad that in many churches now, you go to church and go to court too. It wasn't really like that, but what is happening in this society now? A man can be married and leave his state and come somewhere and just be strolling, come for koinonia, see a very nice lady like this, turn her mind like a pendulum and then get married to her, go and buy small golf and give the parents. The father will say, you must marry this guy. You must marry him. We have suffered. It's enough. Now you get married only to find out that you are the wife of somebody else's. You are a concubine. Why do we have fights? And then I want to tell you something. The rate of unfaithfulness. Listen, this is a study I made by myself. The rate of unfaithfulness in Christian marriages. I was talking to my sister yesterday and she was telling me of a survey that they did. In our local church. Not somewhere else. Our local church. Married women that are not submissive and ladies that are promiscuous that have really spoiled. I don't mean... Uh, okay, you went and slept with somebody by mistake. Willful, willing, conscious, derailing from the things of God. When they announced the statistics to the church, parents were afraid. Parents were afraid. Fathers were afraid. Mothers. Nobody trusted themselves again. Which one are you in these statistics now? Because they didn't announce anybody's name. When my sister told me, he touched me. Hallelujah. Do you know right now, there is almost no trust in our homes hallelujah some of you you are even in a relationship because of how the guy is behaving like an arm robber once he goes to his himself you quickly carry the phone let me check who called uh-huh uh-huh and then the guy will save the lady's name as joseph oh come on we know these things say ah joe yeah when you are home, you say, ah, why are you calling me by this time now? You don't know my wife is at home. Immediately I come. Have you delivered it? Okay, I'm coming to Lagos first thing in the morning. Please don't waste my time. I, I need to spend time with my wife. I found out that I've not been spending time with her. And she's laughing, not knowing that the man is unfaithful. So why is this happening? I can act. If ministry didn't work, I would have done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. The reasons why we have fights. Violating the love respect principle. How many of you remember our love respect principle? What's the principle? That husbands should do what? Love their wives. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 25. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit. You honor. I told you that love for a man means respect and honor. Nothing more, nothing less. To the degree to which you respect and honor your husband. That's the degree to which you love him. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, the degree to which you love her, you care for her, you give her time. Remember our five love languages. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, eh? acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Only ladies are talking. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. No, it's not. We're talking marriage now, so you don't need to start it. The star was before you get married. Once the pastor says husband and wife, God himself takes the star away. Until then, God himself stamps it there. If you force the door to open, it will open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one, violating the love respect principle. How many men don't respect their wives? Two of them go for a program. You see the man disgracing the wife. Have you seen some of our parents do that? Don't pretend as if, and, you, and it will be paining you. You see the woman will just keep quiet. Or the woman disgracing her husband. 
you go there's small popcorn you are about leaving uh, madam can i fetch for this you are fetching people are saying what kind of woman is this the husband is just standing you don't know that you are bearing his image the man is saying honey let's go say i won't go let me do this do we have this in our house and you are just fetching the love respect principle the love respect principle all the guys say i will love my wife say it i will love my wife and the lady say i will honor my husband so that's the number one reason number two i won't talk much about that we are not in a strict only few people are married here so i won't talk emotional dissatisfaction not satisfying themselves sexually and all of that leave it there i'm not saying more hallelujah thank god there's marriage counseling go to your marriage counselor hallelujah but emotional dissatisfaction and this is not just sex spending time together there is an emotional dimension is limited before you get married but when you get married come on it's part of what keeps the bond it is a very serious reason why men listen please a woman who is busy you are a tailor you are a contractor you have restaurant you are you are in french school you are learning another language every time you are, your husband will say only oh, you you are embarrassing him you are making him beg you to sleep with you he will keep quiet one day he will stop talking to you ah you find out that your house help is happy walking in the house very excited madam how are you fine how is everything god has been faithful that's a sign that there's fire on the mountain I'm giving you an honest and a very candid advice. Listen, let me tell you something. God who designed intimacy is not foolish. Are you listening to me? Violating any of God's principle, tightening, lack of intimacy, whatever it is, will cost you a lot. Sisters, let me advise you. You are not in your house. You are supposed to preserve and help the man. Do you know the wife is supposed to cover for the man? Your husband is a nice, handsome man of God. He goes to minister in a convention. God moves and honors you. You are there snapping. And they are saying, how does it feel to be, you know, this bishop's wife? You are talking. One other lady is giving him compliments. Say, sir, uh, please, God gave me this prophetic instruction. I, I need to come and clean your shoes, clean your trousers. The man says, he says sir, I insist. Will you, will you hinder an innocent lady like the man? Says, All right, if you insist. Aha. Uh -huh. You were not there. The media is carrying your face. You are happy. You never had it that good. Now you are enjoying it. Many women are careless about their men. I'm not saying just be irresponsible and you can't allow the man rest. He's having a meeting. You are in front of the, the meeting door. You are saying whatever this meeting is, it will finish in my presence here. There are women like that. This is insecurity. Your husband wants to book ticket. You are there. How many people? No, no. Trust. There must be trust. But in the midst of it, there are efforts that you must make. Are you listening to me? Don't allow any. You know, Christian homes, you can see a woman just come at an odd time and say, I want to come and visit your husband. She's calling him all kinds of names. An unbeliever will tell you straight there. I hope you know, unbeliever women, they, won't talk, they will say, please, Call it jealousy, call it whatever. Let me tell you, let it not happen again. Church people, say if I talk like that, what of in the fellowship? Uh -huh. It's until the man travels for a business trip, four months, you are not there. Later on, one of his friends that cannot keep his mouth shut to say, Madam, I need to talk to you. This thing is paining me and the way I trust you, I must tell you. You see that hotel there, your husband is there. Go and meet him there. For four months, he has been there abroad. emotional dissatisfaction is a very serious issue are you listening to me i didn't want to touch the issue but it's becoming necessary hallelujah brother you are fasting one week two weeks immediately you finish you started maranatha fast you finish amageddon fast now wow 
Why did you marry? Why did you marry? You would have stayed alone. There must be a place. When you get married, define your lives. Are you listening to me? It's very important. There's a book Ora Roberts wrote. One of the reasons why he said he was successful in ministry was he had very close sexual intimacy with his wife. I don't mean... I hope you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, your mind is already... Uh -uh. To the pure, all things are pure. Hallelujah. Number three, financial issues. Sorry, my dear. Are you tired? Financial issues. Very important. Why there are fights on faithfulness, marriage, financial issues. Poverty is a very bad thing. I hope you know. Lack is a very bad thing. Finance, lack of finance has led to the breaking of many good homes. Hallelujah. Let me rush. Number four, spiritual factors. Spiritual factors. We are going to be dealing with this very extensively tonight. Spiritual factors. You married a very nice, loving, virtuous, wonderful lady. Now the lady has changed. You don't even know who you married again. Or the man has changed. The man didn't used to drink. He didn't used to smoke. He was a brother. He was even an esco in your fellowship. That's what made you like him. Now he has changed. He has a special fridge. Cronenberg. Star. Name them. They pay him salary. He comes at 300,000 or 200,000. He comes back with 5,000. His friends have helped him finish it. Comes to vomit around. And you are saying, it wasn't like this. There are many families that have these unanswered questions. And the recommendation they gave them is go for counseling. Let me tell you something. This is not an issue of counseling. Are you hearing me? There are forces of darkness militating against families. And if you do not stand to take your position in Christ and conquer these things, you will be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual factors. You just got married and you found out that this man suddenly developed epilepsy. He wasn't epileptic. There was no problem. Stress that you cannot, you cannot imagine. You give birth to children. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. It's not normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The third area I want to talk about very quickly is the issue of barrenness. The reason for barrenness and unfruitfulness in marriage. In Mark 11 verse 12 to 14. When Jesus saw a barren tree, he cursed it. That means God cannot be the author of barrenness. Say amen. Are you listening to me? The command he gave man. Genesis 1.28. He said be fruitful. Multiply. For a long time, the issue of barrenness disturbed me because I've had the opportunity to pray for many people that have suffered from barrenness. And so it was a personal, it was a personal pain in my heart. And I wanted to find out why. Hallelujah. Now the general reason for barrenness is health challenges. You know, all kind, all the whole medical things. Fibroids, no womb, stories, stories and all of that. I won't go into that. But I want to give you something very shocking. Mm. I'm already sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 98%, listen. 98% of barrenness issues in marriage is a resultant effect of satanic activities. Either in the life of the individuals or tied to their family. Please listen to me carefully. Please, can you hear me? This is very serious. I want to have your attention now. 98%. Sometimes people see ladies or people that are barren and just say, ah, maybe this lady was promiscuous. No, stop judging people. I know healthy people, brothers, sisters, people who loved God, kept themselves. 
Now the man gets married and they start telling him all kinds of reports from the hospital. Oh, you cannot give birth. Now the lady gets married. Suddenly they tell her, there is a growth in your stomach. Where did it come from? What did I do? Listen, please. Please give me strings. Hallelujah. Strings. 98% of barrenness in marriage. Please listen. Because someone may be a savior. Some of you, it's time for you to set your loved ones free. This is why God is bringing this word. People have been asking questions. Why do we have this sister barren? Ah, we knew this sister, this brother barren. Can I tell you something? It is purely demonic. Purely demonic. I once spoke to a lady years ago. I wish there's a way I can see that lady again. Ah, knowledge. Years ago, this lady came to me and she told me she was crying. And she said, Sir, if I tell you what is wrong with me, you will not believe it. She talked to me. She said, I don't have a womb. It's not like I lost it. No fallopian tube, no nothing. I'm as empty as a man. Nobody knows it. She's not told anybody because some of you won't keep quiet. Hallelujah. And this lady was talking to me. Listen, you know, and then those times I was saying, Abba, don't worry. Um, you know, God will do something. God will do all of that. And the lady looked at me and she said, will I marry? I said, Abba, you marry. Do you know the question the lady asked me? She said, can you marry somebody like me? Aha. That was when the thing dawned on me that this lady was not playing games with me here. You know, sometimes you see people come for counseling. You don't know what is eating them up. I looked at this lady. I said, Lord, do you know after I left this lady, I had to go and cry to God. I said, Lord, give me the power for creative miracles or let this kind of people never come to me again. They should rather go to a man of God who can solve their problem. This is too bad. This lady left my place crying. Now you will see this lady and think she was promiscuous, isn't it? Because we are very judgmental in the body of Christ. Once you see anything, you just carry your mouth and start saying things. Uh-uh. The Bible says judge not. There's nothing. They, they said she was supposed to be a man or something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then you know all those doctors, medical, we have a doctor here. He gave a testimony. You know all those things they taught you people. Hallelujah. There are issues like that. A man gets married to his wife. One year, no child. Two years, no child. Three years, no child. What is wrong? There are even to make matters worse. There are times that they go to the hospital, the man is fine. Have you seen people like that? Fine. Nothing is wrong. The woman is fine. Three weeks ago, I was, three weeks now, yes, I was counseling and a woman came to me. Very interesting case. This woman was pregnant. Maybe you would say it's about six, seven, but they would go to the scanning machine. Huh? Ladies. And then they'll find out that there's nothing. It's not like there's fibroid or mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So when you hear me talk like this, some of you just sit down saying, I beg this. No, let me tell you. God has granted us. You can ask the ministers. They will tell you. Counseling opens your eyes to things you will not imagine. Hallelujah. One day after Koinonia, a lady walked up. No, I saw her. And I knew that something was wrong with her. And I called her. I said, what is wrong with you? And she laughed. She didn't want to tell me. And I asked her. I said, what is it? She said, there's something. It's like it looks like a worm, but a little bigger than the worm in her private part. It's a living thing. No, I'm, I'm being very honest with some of you so that you wake up tonight. We are not playing games here. We are going to pray. Ah, how do you explain this now? And the lady was looking. Immediately I looked at her. I saw the spirit. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest. There are some of you, listen. I want to teach you something tonight. 
98%. Delay in marriage for some of you is a curse around your family. Pronouncements and projections. Listen, your salvation affects you, not your territory. Are you listening to me? Let me teach you something here. Your salvation does not change your territory. Otherwise, there will not be terrorists in Nigeria. Your salvation does not change your territory. It takes an understanding of God's word and the operation of the anointing to put the devil where he belongs and release yourself from shackles of darkness. There are many people here. There are all kinds of yokes on your life. Please listen to me. There are many of you here. You sleep in the night. Men come to you to have sex in your dreams. They use the face of your father, mother, the face of another woman, the face of animals. You've just been laughing. That, that's, that's, that's a question mark happening there. The church does not deal with these things. We shy away. Many of you here, I tell you, because we come from an African continent. Our children will not need to go through this. But there will be a generation that must pay the price. And it so happens that we are the ones in between. Don't let anybody fool you. America is over 200 years. Some people pay the price and pass the heritage of godliness. My children will not need to go through this. Are you listening to me? But someone is got to go through this. And it so happens that you are the one. So let me announce to you, for some of you who have been trivializing things, you've been confessing God's word. People come, some of, listen, I, I want to deal with some things this night. This is pre-miracle service. There are many of you that have been oppressed. You get up, you are bedwetting. You cannot explain it to anybody. You are not bad. People cannot understand. You need help. But the church will not arise. We will keep giving all kinds of flimsy explanations. Some of you have an unusual urge for sex. You cannot, you love God, but you can't see a man or woman. This is not normal. These are operations of spirits. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, there's been, there's been constant happenings around your family. Everybody that marries, there is a divorce. It, it kept happening. It kept happening. Are you ready to break that cycle or you just want to watch and be saying, oh, don't worry. It won't happen to me. You will be surprised. Because it's already happening to some of you right now. This is why God gives gifts to the body. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something about spirits. Look at me. Some of you do not know that there are territorial spirits, listen please, that are, are willfully given access over territories. I pray for people for deliverance almost every day and the demons shout and what they always say is we have legal access in this body. In the book of Jude, the Bible says, when Archangel Michael came to take the body of Moses, what happened? Satan was there claiming the body too. Satan is still claiming the bodies of people. When a demon leaves a man, the Bible says, it will go through arid regions. Hear me? Seeking for a place of refuge. He said, not finding any. He will say, let me arise and go to my house. He has gone, but he's still calling the man his house. Hallelujah. I was born again. I was a preacher and demons were still oppressing me. Are you listening to me? I confess the word. I read the books you have read. Let me tell you something. I was moving terribly in the anointing but demons would press me in the night. I would sleep in the night and see them come. My shouting the name of Jesus was as helpless as something was wrong. This is what has been happening to some of you. You have a dream. They are pressing you. They are oppressing you. You can't even shout Jesus. You are about to write a serious paper. The devil just comes. Somebody just sleeps between the dream. That's the end of it. Nothing works again. Don't let anybody deceive you. We will not lie to you in this place. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Tonight, Whatever has held your destiny will bow. This is the reason. See, 
you this is what many people like mfm and the rest call spirit husband and spirit wife i know many people say, ah, there's nothing like that just shut your mouth oh. shut your mouth quickly because you see let me tell you something brothers and sisters the bible says the things that appear in this realm that the things that are material were made from the things that are immaterial there are there are tribes that covenanted people to people are you hearing what i'm saying he said right from when you were in your mother's womb i knew you i called you that means spiritual things can happen right from your mother's womb it's in your bible he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you already to be a prophet hallelujah and there are many innocent believers not getting married getting barren giving birth to all kinds of satanic things do you know why satan is frustrating you because you or your parents have made a decision to serve the lord do you know i was telling someone i cannot remember with the crude traditional african ways of giving birth sir we didn't have difficulty in giving birth when a woman is giving birth they will bring fire and they will even use knives or something to cut the placenta yet women were giving birth freely do you know why because their allegiance was unto satan some of our parents got up and said look this is over and the devil says you have declared war this is the mark and some of you sit down and just laugh you like a cool smooth nice message that just tells you everything is all right yes potentially but you need to get up and make it so it says we have seen everything under his feet he said but we do not yet see i'm, I'm sorry he said he was raised made a little lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor he said but we do not see all things under his feet that means all things have not yet come experientially hallelujah there are the bible says blotting out every handwriting what is what was paul seeing when he was saying this what did paul see where did they write the handwritings there are all kinds of diabolic ordinances against people some of you this is what is responsible for your marital predicament no man comes around you or only married people only married people don't say the, there is nothing no by now you know that mistakes don't happen in the realm of the spirit the lord told me to preach this and set people free this night are you listening to me delay delay nothing works a man will come into your life you will do the introduction later he will get up and become a strange man to you don't you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit many of you are not reading the handwritings on the wall counseling is not the solution the devil needs to experience the power of the kingdom this is what will put him to flight he said how all inspiring are your ways through the greatness of thy power not through noise not through counseling will thy enemies submit themselves there are ladies any man that comes into your life this spirit will frustrate the guy and bastardize his life you are a good person there are ladies anytime you enter a relationship with them the guy must die it has happened and they are just giving useless explanations beautiful lady virtuous submissive no guy will ever see you listen some of you once a guy sees you all he wants is to sleep with you no responsible man can see you only touts and armed robbers and drug barons they are the ones who can see you something is wrong is someone hearing me tonight we are going to pray if you came here this is how we are rounding up this series hallelujah some of you would have been married since but because of this wickedness the devil laying claims over your marital life and destiny every night some of us cannot sleep snakes everywhere to the point that some of you even see them physically i've counseled people one time a lady came inside we were counseling immediately the lady came inside she just came in what the next thing i saw a snake maybe like twice this just by her side i said my dear what is this that i'm seeing and she said sir this is why i came what is this thing 
Some of you come from royal families. Ordinances have been made against you. Let me tell you, if you do not rise up in the name of the Lord, be ready, there is trouble. The day you gave your life to Christ, you declared war. The devil marked the line and it takes authority to put him where he belongs. Joe, you were with me in Mina. Please stand up. He was with me when I went for the crusade in Mina. What was the rampant case there? Blindness, deafness. The women, once they give birth, they become deaf and dumb. Ask him, he was there. The first day of the crusade, God moved and mighty things happened. The second day of the crusade, after the crowd, they created a special session for the sick people. If you're a man of God, you will tell us today. They line from one end, a large crowd to the other end. Ask him, there were over maybe 60 or so people. Those days, when we didn't have this understanding, we'll come and be struggling, trying to heal the sick. Ah, uh ah, -uh, now we know better. I knew that this is about a territory. This is about a territory. I settled it in my secret place. More than 40 of the people, I was lifting them from their wheelchairs. Stand up. See, once the strong man, no man will enter into a man's house and spoil the goods without binding the strong man. I give you spiritual knowledge. Many of you, God will set you on fire. You need to go back home and say, Aha, now I know the answer. This is it. This is it. No guesswork again. This is it. Hallelujah. I barely came to the people. Just one touch. Ear open. Eyes open. The mute were speaking. Now this before it will be a spectacular miracle for me. But now I know better. There are many of you. You, are, you think dating.com or whatever is the solution. Let me tell you tonight, you are going to humble yourself. There are many of you, in the, you see all kinds of things. Some of you are Christians, but there are demonic, diabolic ordinances. I once prayed for a lady who told me that voices, she hears voices. They tell her the things to do. She was walking one time. And this thing ladies like putting on their waist. It was on the ground. And the voice said, carry it and put. No man except you are on fire. See, brothers, let me tell you. If you are not on fire, I don't know how to help you. You will fall like a leaf. There are many ladies that come for counseling. As soon as they enter, I see the spirit of seduction. And I know that if not because I've, I've declared my stand unto God, you will be surprised. Because they tell me how many pastors, even in this area, that they sleep around with. Men and women who stand on your pulpits and speak nonsense. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm angry in my spirit because some destinies will be opened. Some of your parents, in a bid to help you when you were sick or something, ran to the village. Is that true? Please answer me. Is that true? You were getting admission and they ran. They came and said, okay, please, we want her to pass this. They did it out of innocence because that's all they knew. But let me tell you something. The devil never gives you anything free. Make no mistakes about it. You will collect the goods now and pay for it later on. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? This is the problem with many of you. Your kingdom reigns. His kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Above all, above every cultural kingdom, above every ordinance of darkness, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all, yeah, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all, let me tell you something about the operation of these wicked spirits of darkness. 
they will not only wreck your marital life your academics will be shattered your personal self worth shattered sicknesses you cannot account for this is what many of you are suffering please hear me tonight don't trivialize what you are listening to this could be the key that will help you maritally this could be the key i tell you when you dethrone satan you will be shocked the way doors will start opening for you hallelujah i'm going to pray enough is enough you can't be living like this except god has not called us except god has not sent us part of our mandate is to set the captives free i'm not a pastor our mandate is to set the captives free there are many of you that you, you are you are trusting god for marriage this year but the way things are going except god intervenes it will not work not work hallelujah there are some of you you are a row of ladies in your house nobody has married a row of people four five ladies nobody has married one brother just comes two days is not serious let me tell you if this is my wife and bishop stan wants to come and collect her if i'm a responsible man you think i'll just allow him what will you do you will fight unto death They laid cold over the body of Moses. There are many barrenness issues. Some of your loved ones, they are busy insulting your sister, calling her a witch. And see, listen, I must balance this before we pray. Listen, this is where you need to be careful with prophets. Because this lady, look at me, please. Let me teach you something. Listen, this sister here can be affected by a lot of demonic things from her she may not even know as a prophet i can stand and i can see a demon behind this lady it does not mean she's a witch this is demonic oppression are you hearing me i may pray for her you see people who came for koinonia here roll on the floor they are not witches many prophets have caused trouble in the body of christ they keep blaming people a woman comes now you come and pray for her. A woman came to me. She came to complain about her husband. They were actually a woman brought them, two of them. They were quarreling. The woman was this and that and that and that. And then the husband now started calling the woman a witch. That a prophet told him his wife is a witch. He should, he should leave her alone. As I was talking to her, I now saw the spirit. And the woman started manifesting. The man said, you see? You see what I'm saying? Confirmation. Immediately I, I finished. The spirit in him jumped up and wanted to run out. He scattered the things there. Scattered my table. When he finished, I said, who now is a witch among two of you? Are you listening to me? Very important. You may not know the things you are dabbling into. And if spiritual knowledge is not given unto you, you will not, the Bible says, through wise counsel, make war. Some of you will be settling things. This is pre-miracle service. I tell you, don't miss next week's miracle service. What God will do in this place will surprise you. If you are coming here and you are not blessed, we are fake. Are you listening to me? If nothing is changing, that means, that means maybe we went to one shrine for something to pour on our head. But I tell you, there is a living God in this place. Are you ready? We are going to pray. Go back, sweetheart. One prayer point and I'll begin ministering. Listen. You are going to pray this night. Tonight is not a night of shame. Tonight is the night when you will end some things. Some of you have struggled with pornography, master. You can't help it. This is demonic. You don't conquer demonic things by willpower. Brothers, it takes the anointing. It takes the anointing. There are many of you, you can't keep one relationship. You love a lady, two days later, you don't love her again. You think something is wrong. You go to another lady, two days later, you can't love her again. You, you are married, but you can't see another woman move. Come on, this is demonic. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. We are going to rise tonight. Everybody rise up. I tell you, the devil, the devil is in trouble. Whatever allowed you to come here tonight is in trouble. Hallelujah.
Now we are going to pray. Just for three or four minutes, you are going to pray and say, Lord, whatever stronghold in my life, whatever, I don't care where it's coming from. Lord, this night, you are going to visit me. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The snakes in your dreams, the men that come to oppress you, these satanic kings, outside inside make sure you are praying enough is enough the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted to set the captives free upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness Satan you are in trouble tonight Satan you are in trouble the strong man against families Dying their marital destinies. Your time is up tonight. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Pray for your family members. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for the buried people in your family. That barrenness. You have come to your end tonight. Light shines in the darkness. One more minute. Come on, pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take Enough is enough. As soon as Zion travels, shake it, take 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it will end. It will end. Bakata Balada. Please be in the mode of prayer. We are serious in this place. If your neighbor is distracting you, tell him, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm going to pray for people right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for people. Oh, there will be mass, mass, listen, mass emancipation. Some of you who did not know that what is happening to you is demonic, you'll be surprised. Don't forget about your neighbor. Hallelujah. This spirit that comes to oppress you, hear me? Whether carrying the face of your brother, your mother, another woman, I don't care. Telling you they are married to you, listen to me. I tell you, I see fire in this place. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray. Whether you fall down or not is, is not the issue. Right now. Believe and expect. There is a lady in that row. I see a spirit manifesting. It's a snake. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. We are going to shout the name Jesus once. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want you to shout it with faith. There is noise that will hit the gates of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There are many of you snakes snakes the bible says i have given you authority luke 10 19 over snakes there is a reason why the bible calls snakes and scorpions lift your hands i'm going to pray the power of god will move in a mighty way anyone here that has been initiated into any demonic thing whether you know it or you do not know it right now lord jesus let the power of god move be it in dreams move i set you free 
right now right now right now right now right now be free be free be free come out of her out come out come out come out come out of her the children shall not suffer the iniquity every occult initiation every initiation through sex through dreams that will close the, the doors of your marital life I challenge it I challenge it Hallelujah. Let her go. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. This is a snake. Come out. Come out right now. Out of her. Come out. Go. Go right now. Listen, you are being delivered though. Don't wait till you fall. Something is happening. The presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Ladies, say after me, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. My body. Look at me. Look at me. Come. Come. Leave her, leave her. Shall the captives be delivered? Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, do you know for some of you, this is what spilled over into your academics. Many of you may not know. This is why no matter what you do, things don't happen. Don't miss miracle service. Sister, come. This is what you have suffered. Come, you. The lady put in her hand. Come out. Come, it's time for God to help you. No, you, you. The lady with pink, come. Please hurry up, we're out, we're out of time. There's fire burning all over this building. That devil. Look at me, sister. You have suffered. Your academics is not very good. This is a spirit. You are not lazy. Look at me. Look at me. Hallelujah. I set you free. It will cough out something now. That devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Let this girl go free. In the name of Jesus. Now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. See. Now in the next two to three minutes. You are going to pray for your family members. That as you are praying. Don't keep quiet. Some of you, your sisters have suffered. If you can invite them here for miracle service, invite them. If you cannot pray, lift your voice. Say, Satan, enough in my family. Enough. Pray. Pray. Satan, I stand representing my family. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. I set altars of darkness on fire. Get lost. Out 
outside are you praying outside are you praying outside are you praying my family comes under divine protection my family pray for your sister pray for your brothers hallelujah hallelujah this is what is happening in many of our homes this is why daddy is fighting with mommy hallelujah right now in the next two minutes i want you to cause listen any seed of barrenness whether in your life ladies i want you to pray this if you need to lay hands on your womb lay hands on your stomach do it pray for your sisters at home pray i am fruitful pray I am fruitful. No devil. No devil. Please take this prayer seriously. Take this prayer seriously. The Bible says, be fruitful. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. Ladies pray. No fibroids. No demonic clothes, no fibroids. Guys, pray. Every devil of impotency is cursed. Pray for your family members. Barriness, hear the word of the Lord. Barriness, I don't care how long. I don't care how long. Share ye the word of the Lord. Share ye the word of the Lord. Share ye the word of the Lord. Share ye. The power of God is still moving. The power of God is still moving. Let her go. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I want to pray for you. We're out of time. Lift your hands, everybody. If it doesn't apply to you what I'm saying, you can connect for your parents or your family members. Any lady here or any woman with any demonic growth called fibroid or any kind of cyst, listen, in the name that is above all names, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. I cut that growth away from your body I flush it out of your body I flush it out of your body any satanic medical condition whether your fallopian tube is blocked you don't have womb even if you lived a promiscuous life before and you lost a womb I create a new one right now When God forgives sins, he forgives the consequences. Hallelujah. I pray whatever has held your marital destiny, that the man that is destined for you cannot come or you cannot get married right now. Be released. Be released. Be released. I release you. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. I command it. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. Hallelujah. 
whoever has been tied here in any wrong ordinance whether it was unknowing some of you enter relationships you go and cut yourself cut the guy drink your blood you call it love this is nonsense but i want to pray for you now the bible says the blood of jesus speaketh better things than the blood of abel satan hear my voice over the lives of these people i command right now take your hands away take your hands away take your hands away lift up your heads all you gates be ye lifted ancient doors ancient doors every altar of darkness my bible says whatever has not been planted by god will be uprooted i uproot i tear down i set on fire in the name of jesus every spirit of lust every spirit of lust please lift your hands i'm praying for everybody every spirit of lust that keeps taking you back into immorality whether you want it or not right now in the name of jesus i set you free i set you free i set you free receive it receive freedom against lust hallelujah anyone here under the curse of habit lesbianism homosexuality look you must not be just lift your hands i'm praying for you don't say i'm not uh -uh. whether homosexuality listen lesbianism all kinds of things there are people that sleep with animals and do i'm speaking for the sake of the many who will be hearing not necessarily just you there are some of you ladies you have affection for one another guys affection you think it's normal this is satanic right now in the name of jesus i deliver you from this curse in the name of jesus be free be free be free Finally, I pray for you. Whatever you have lost because of the times of ignorance, some of you have suffered heartbreaks, some of you have suffered a lot of things, I pray. There is a God that can restore the years canker worms have eaten. Lift your hands, I want to pray. This is finally. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that for many people between now and miracle service, give them a big miracle. Between now and miracle service, you will testify on Friday upon this altar. You will testify. I release breakthrough. Breakthrough that will bring restoration. You will testify. I open doors of favor, doors of grace, doors of academics. I challenge darkness. You will sleep like a baby. No more fibroid. No more growths. No more pains. No more eggs. You are free. All the spirits that come to torment you, you will see them no more. You will sleep like a baby forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are in this place. Listen to me. This is the most important thing. If you have not given your heart, please let them not go. sister don't go yet you've not given your heart to the lord you are already in danger hallelujah what an opportunity as we prepare for our great miracle service next week you're here you've never given your heart to the lord or you've given your heart to the lord and you found yourself derailing honestly you've entered ways that are not of god and you want to make it right right now please we, we are limited we just have a minute or two for you inside and outside as the lord speaks to you you've seen what the lord is doing in this place hallelujah the bible says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and i will give you rest leave your seat and come out right now i want to agree with you i want to pray with you appreciate them as they come there are people who have never given their lives to christ or this is their first decision please don't sit back don't wait for somebody else 
inside and outside quickly keep clapping thank you for coming thank you sister thank you sister god bless you there are people outside don't sit back there come and stand here quickly keep appreciating them thank you thank you sir the lord is bringing you to change you i see you my brother god bless you thank you thank you my sister thank you sir appreciate them koinonia it's your sacrifice to bring them to the kingdom god bless you bring all of them here hallelujah thank you my brother and my sister for coming this will be the beginning keep coming if you still want to come hallelujah i'd like you to pray this prayer after me say lord jesus say from your heart lord jesus i love you i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me i declare that i'm born again i'm a child of god the grace of god is at work in my life from today i receive the holy spirit and god's life into my heart i'm a new person in the name of